beautiful morning in New York City. All right, another show of the Elite Show with our new special always guest, Michael Dowd. I'm happy to be here. I, I feel like I'm becoming a regular here now. Pretty much. I wish I, you guys covered my fucking, uh, my room. Oh, no. <laughs> you live with me. <laughs> <laughs> What's it like living with Michael Dowd? We're no angels. You know, I always say that. That's what it is. <laughs> it's madness 24-7. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. I know. You know what it is? I have to fend off all the, look at him. He's still handsome. You know, I, I look, he just saw a picture of me a little while ago. He said, I looked good. I look, looked in the past. What the hell happened? <laughs> what, what are you, what, somebody owes somebody money? Yeah, somebody paid me to say it. <laughs> so, John, you were just on the Today Show. Yeah. And, Mike, you've been on a laundry list that I didn't know. 60 Minutes, uh, Prime, which was back then, right? Which was 2020. 2020. Uh, Joe Rogan. Yeah, so Barbara uh, Walters, Mike Wallace. Yeah. Barbara Walters, Artie Lang, Howard Stern. Yeah. Joe I Kiss. was Barbara Walters. She, she cried when she left. She left me in prison. She cried. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. See, I like Barbara Walt. She cried. She was like so hurt that I was. She had to leave me. Behind. She says, "I want to take him with me." <laughs> yeah, it was not. Yeah, yeah. Really. If I was you, I would have held on to a leg and said, "Take me." Yeah, yeah, it didn't work. Maybe out. they would have given you a better deal. Yeah. It's, listen, you know, I mean, we're all see. That's the humanity behind us. We're jokers. We have fun. We have we have a little entertainment program here. But the reality is, we're still human. Yeah. Now, what was Howard Stern like? First off, how does it happen? You get the call. Uh, how do you get on Howard? I, 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 at the time, I was, I was trying to get my book done. It still hasn't been, By the way, it still hasn't been done. Okay, <laughs> the seven I'm home 15 and a half. No, the, the, book, the book about my personal life, you know? Right. People uh, don't know. So when you... Yeah, so, yeah, so the 7-5 is a documentary that was done about my life. Uh, and John, in fact, that's how I met John. He contacted me. He said, yeah, you did, they did a great documentary about you. Uh, come on, meet me up in upstate in, in, a, in some hotel. Yeah, you know, we, a party going or yeah, something. Yeah, we had a big party. Yeah, you invited me up there yeah, with, the, yeah, yeah. with the girls from Jersey Housewives or yeah, something. Yeah, anyway, yeah. so... <laughs> Yes, that's how I met John, right? For, like for the first time, formal met John. But so uh, I was getting. What the fuck did you ask me? I said, how how did the Howard? St I get like that. How how did oh. you get on the Howard Stern show? So my book agent guy um, was trying to entice the uh, the uh, the publishing world by bringing me out there, and I, I was jacked. I was pretty. Like you almost said. I just said you were yeah, pretty yeah, before. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, and, and I just came home. So they were going to put they put me on the show. Uh, how would it. Uh, for, in fact, Artie Lang was supposed to be the. Uh, what would you call The co host. It? The co host. Yeah. No, I was friends with Artie. But, but they couldn't find him, but, but Artie missed him. That's when <laughs> he, he was, was out. On and off. He, he was on a tear. So. Uh, I love I, him. When I get, Artie was a great guy. He was guy. on a tear. When well, I get. Not when was. I, when I got, yeah. <laughs> when I get in there, uh, Howard Stern only, only remembers my case. He doesn't really know what to ask me. So he doesn't even know what to ask. So the interview's a flop. I'm on probation. He's asking me, are you a wild, crazy guy? I'm going to tell you. I'm on probation. I got probation officers. He's getting, the re he's getting a copy of this when I finish this interview here. I mean, you know, what am I going to tell you? I'm, 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 I'm you banging were, strippers and stuff? Well, he loved Scores, uh, Howard. Yeah, I, I, he I, lived there. He was in Scores day and night. I, I know where he wants to go with this, but I, I'm on probation. I, I, got a, I got a relationship going on. Maybe I'm doing, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. I'm, I'm swinging from trees and, and strippers underwear. I can't. I can't, I can't. <laughs> so, I, so I can't talk about that party we had in Westchester uh, then? Well, you can, man. I mean, I'm, I mean, uh, I'm just clear check on that. Dates. I'm clear, clear on, on that. I have to see uh, if I think I'm clear on that one, yeah, that was a good time. But anyway, so, so now <laughs> that was a good. I was trying to help him out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now, would you Listen, say that, that he wasn't well researched so he, on you yeah, prior? Yeah, I mean, he knew who I was because he knew from the past because I was fr front page of the newspaper for two years. Uh, me and John Gotti were competing, I guess, whatever. <laughs> and then this guy was killing people for him. But anyway, <laughs> well, but so, so, but yeah, so he put me in uh, on the show. The, the interview was a little bit of a flop. Then he asked Robin Quivers, so what do you think? Is he a good looking Oh, guy? I remember Robin. Where, what have happened to him? He's still running. He says, they renewed him, they gave him another 400 million. Foo, no, Robin's the woman, right? Yeah, Robin, yeah. But, she's still uh, there. Yeah, yeah, so, they just got re-signed. Yeah, two days a week. She was a good million. sidekick for for Stern. She still is. Pretty black woman, yeah. cute. Nice. She, she just beat cancer. Oh, really? Well, yeah. Good for her. Good, good for her. her. Yeah. Good for her. But anyway, she can't see. She, she, she <laughs> well, she's <laughs> behind glass. Yes, yeah, Stern, Stern says to her, "What do you think of that? Is he a good-looking guy?" She goes, "Ah." Well, obviously, she could see. 
<laughs> and remember, Mike, you're well, going up against the likes of Brad Pitt. At, what year is this? That's true. Yeah. I, I, what year know, is this? Brad Mike? Pitt was a little what bit year? cuter. I don't know. Two thousand and four, five. Okay, so he's uh, he's going up against two of his own Owen Stern then in the beginning. Oh. John, Johnny Depp. Uh, Oh, wait, Iron stop Man. right there. He ain't passing Johnny Depp. Sorry, buddy. Yeah, you're dead right there. <laughs> yeah, Johnny have, Depp is Johnny Depp's still though. getting a broad. Hey, listen, yeah. listen, and he goes can, fucking psycho can, and he's off. You yeah, can yeah. pull up some pictures from when I was in the can and when I first came home. Those guys, I give them a run for their money. And I'm six foot and change, all right? Yeah, so, so there, there you are with Rogan. Well, that's, I don't look too I wonder I why. Like that picture. You don't like that picture? You look pretty good. I don't like that picture. I didn't realize he was that short. Yeah. How tall are you again, Mike? I'm six foot and change. You know, six and a quarter. Hey, Rogan looked good yesterday, kicking the bag, actually. Mm -hmm. He came back because mm -hmm. he had knee surgery mm -hmm. or something. He had somebody took care of his neck. Yeah. He actually looked pretty good. I was surprised how good he looked on that. Yeah, you know, he, he can fight like a motherfucker. Yeah, that's he what I'm saying. He can fight, time. yeah. No, he's in great shape. Yeah, yeah. he's a good he shape. He was kicking, yeah. yeah. He, he, boy, he was kicking that thing hard. He was busted ribs with that kick. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, he still got it. You know, he yeah, still yeah. got it a bit. Yeah. 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 How old's Rogan now about? 50-something. I don't think he's 50 yet. No. I'll tell you what, if he's even close to 50, he's in some Yeah, he's in great shape, John. He's in great shape. Yeah, 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 see, yeah. see how old uh, Joe Rogan is? Now, when you went to Rogan, we had talked about it a little bit before. Right. You said he was very factual-based. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what. We do just, just as good or if not better interviews than him here. So I just had, you know, but don't get me. I'm not taking nothing away from the king. Wow, he's 54. He's 54. I'm not taking anything away from the king right Five, now. 5'8". He's got quite the rep rapport going on there. But, Biggest but, right now. They're, but they're, one thing I will say is... You know, I had to pay for everything to go out there, and I'm, I was on my broke. I'm broke. You know, you know, I'm still broke now, trying to get five dollars. You know, yeah. and, and he uh, think he. What are you talking about? You know, broke. We were out the other day. You drove bought a bottle of Cristal. Uh, I don't drink, so uh, <laughs> you got it. Uh, <laughs> you bought it for me. Uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But then again, Mike, you're going where you know you're going to get a gazillion views. Well, you know what it is Tommy? I didn't. I don't. I didn't have the. I, didn't, I wasn't set up to, to to profit off of views. Okay, you know, had I been. Yes, but what, I'll tell you who did really well the, was the movie, the Seven Five, because he, he he when I went on there, it it, 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 it exploded. It was a very well done documentary, but when he put it out there, it took off. It took off. Yeah, and then you know I, the phone started ringing again, and I was already in contract, so that screwed me. You know, and they got your life rights, and you know that I've said on the show before. They still own my life rights; they won't let go. They got me by the throat, but hopefully in like fourteen months now it'll be. Did you do the Joey Diaz show too? Yeah. Joey you Cole. did. Joey's friends with uh, my friend Bob Bobby, by the way. Hello. He's out here. So uh, he's another uh, oh. ex cop. And oh, okay. uh, actually, his son, he was telling me a story. His son got shot in the foot, I believe. Very lucky to be alive, too. And uh, From a shot to the foot? Yeah. Wow. I mean, you know, you Want to go listen, up? you got, well, I'm saying it could have hit him anywhere else, oh, but yeah. he had several operations. You know, it's not what everybody thinks. You get shot in the foot, they operate once, and you're good. You know, it crushes bones, and, you know, and he was just lucky, and uh, the guy, you know, was firing away. And if I believe, if I got the story right, one of, I think it was his partner went around the back and uh, killed the guy from uh, the other side of the house. And, uh, you know, Getting a bullet in the foot sounds painful as shit. Listen, if you're getting hit with something big, I mean, I don't know if you haven't been shot. Oh, yeah. I think I know the answer. But so if, <laughs> you know, it, it, it doesn't tickle, it hurts. <laughs> and, uh, but, you know, thank God that his son's okay and he recovered. And and back to a lot of these police, would they risk their lives? So, you know, people know I advocate for them. So. Yeah, you do. Every, every single show, you do. Because it only takes one incident, you lose your life. Yeah. You may never see an incident. If that incident comes, you lose your life. So, you know. Now, when you compare the but, two. But Joey Coco was uh, was was really good to me. Yeah. I don't even know who Joey Coco is. Coco Diaz. Diaz. Oh, yeah. he's, he's, Joe he's, funny. he's funny. I, I just know from Rogan yeah. laughing at him. Yeah. He's oh, crazy. he's very funny. Yeah. Yeah. Joey, yeah. And, Joey, and Joey treated you really, really good. Um, you know, I'm, so, you know, there's different treatment by people. Well, Bobby said he's a gentleman who grew up. Yeah, he paid there. for the flights. Yeah. He yeah. did everything. Yeah. Put me in a room, gave him walk-around money, and made sure I had every meal. Yeah. Well, you know, Pretty good. He, yeah. He was, so he did, he what was good. the biggest difference between Howard Stern's show and Joe Rogan's show? Well, he was prepared. Rogan was prepared, you know, and uh, Stern was unprepared at the time, you know. Uh, you know, and and Stern's more. He was more slapstick to be a little bit of a trying to catch a a, a, a saying or, or you know how I can be a little off the cuff funny, right? I guess. But so he was trying to lean in that direction. 
Um, oh, they had a guy call in, who, uh, um, a cop call in, <laughs> and that was that was a fight. You know, that was. I, I, oh, he was against you. My Irish came up. Yeah, my Irish came up. Oh, this guy thinks he's somebody. I said, "What are you a fucking? What are you a tough guy? Well, because because you're a detective, twenty two years. We got to go back and forth now. You, you know, what are you a hero? I mean, you know, because now because he's calling me a piece of shit, basically. You know, so, and, <laughs> and that probably made the show too. Because that on. was that was when it was Mike, serious. Mike, that made Mike. Show. yeah, well, whatever. The point. The, the, the I was point. So I'm going to Drew there. No, 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 because I know because. I ruined the job," he says. "I said I ruined the job. What? Now, now, now people can turn people in for fucking shaking people down. I mean, you, you got a place to go because I mean, if you if you're a legit cop, yeah, I know I I was disparaged the badge, but but that being said, now a cop who's working with a guy who's robbing drug dealers could feel a little bit better about you know turning the cop in. I can't work with a guy who's robbing drug dealers at one end of the precinct and locking up murders at the other end, it's a, it's a little tough spot to be in unless you're down with it. So in other words, it's one or the other. Well, yeah, I mean, if kind you, of. listen, 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 I'm an advocate for, for good policing. You know, and I, you know, <laughs> not really. No, no, no now no, you no. are. Now no, you no, are. no, I am, but yes. Yeah. All joking aside. No, 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 for the real, for the real thing is if, 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 if I'm going to be an advocate for good policing, which I am, I have to make, make fun of what I did and, and, of course, call me, myself out for it. But at the same time, if a guy's going to call up and say I ruined the job, well, how'd I ruin the job? You know, I, 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 I actually taught internal affairs how to catch me. That's what I did. <laughs> so I actually helped the job. Don't forget you found crack. And the citizens. And you found crack. And I found crack. <laughs> Not that I... I never touched crack, by the way, myself personally. Good for you. Not once. Yeah. But you, but you were the first to find it. In yeah, Europe, right? yeah. I mean, in Brooklyn, you and your partner. Uh, yeah, well, we were. Yeah, yeah, we were the first two to find it. Of course, turned it the money at some point. <laughs> oh, Kenny. No, not uh, Kenny. Uh, no, another no, another guy. I don't want to say his name. He's not mm. that. Yeah. Mm. He knows. Did you know he was he on the Stern Show? Hmm? Did you know that he had been on the Stern Show? Uh, I think I did. Yeah. I mean, fuck to be on Rogan and Stern. I knew he was on. Nobody bigger. I didn't know Joey's. You were on. I knew you were on Rogan. I knew you were on Stern. Audie. Actually, yes, I Audie did. Audie Lang. Uh, yeah, Audie Lang. I know because I know yeah. Audie. Yeah. And, and he's got uh, sixty minutes, twenty twenty. Barbara Walters. Well, he did. And with sixty, you had who? Who was it? Mike Wallace. Okay, Mike yeah. Wallace. He, and Mike was huge in the, in the business back then. Yeah, yeah well, that that show. Is he still alive? No, that no. His son. His son is Chris. They just kicked him off Fox. That was his son, Chris Wallace. Oh, good. Yeah, that's right. Remember? Yeah, they kicked him off. Chris Wallace. That's yep. his son. Oh, He's I don't gone. like him. He yeah. went to CNN. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Yeah. Goodbye. Good. Good. Well, I didn't like Chris Wallace yeah. at all. Good, no. Good. Well, he fucked Trump in that. Good, no, in not that because thing. even that. Because yeah. Well, yeah. even oh, because Marty, of that. But. Because it's, it's like John. Know, what's your favorite color, Mike? What are you going to do about China? Yeah. Stop yeah. him. What's your favorite yeah. color, pencil? Yeah. Well, Mike, what are you going to do with Kit? With Can I tell you, Chris Wallace full of shit. Shutting him up. Shutting up. Shutting up Trump too. Oh, 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 oh. We don't. No, you, you know what? You're I, your time. I say this all the time. If you're gonna if you're gonna debate or if you're gonna be a host, be fair. Let let it go. On one side or the other, don't have an opinion. The problem was Chris Wallace, he always has a fucking opinion and it's one sided. Right. So if you're somebody that wants to see something fair and a and a, a good talking an honest debate, discussion. An honest yeah. discussion, you gotta let it go. He he cut that. And he and he was obvious what he was doing. And one thing Trump did say that was correct. He says, "So I'm going against three people." Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah he's yeah. right. And he had the balls to say. Yeah, yeah right, yeah. right, right. Yeah. yeah. And and I'm just bringing this up not because I copied off Rogan because it's true. Rogan was willing to have uh, Trump and Biden on his show yeah. and moderate the two of them. Right. Trump right. said, "Okay, let's go." I'm willing to do that too. Yeah, right. Like yeah, yeah. yeah. You, 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 know, you know, Biden was hanging out in that fucking bunker when that was going on. Yeah, he was fucking sleeping. That would have been good, though. That would have been a real debate. A three hour debate. Who can hang and real questions? Oh, Without well, real questions, he can't. It last about Biden a minute. can't. It Without a prompter, he can't talk. Yeah. Why? Well, might have went in a different way if he would have done. Listen, I don't care what party you for. You know the guy's missing a couple of cards in that deck. <laughs> he can't talk. Yeah, the elevator don't yeah, go to yeah. the top. End message. Yeah, but talking about shows, Johnny. You, yep. You, so you, you got on the Today Show. So tell us how it happened. How how did you get the same thing I asked him? How did you get the call? How did you get the opportunity to go on the Today Show? Okay. So I was driving. Actually, I don't know where I was driving. I was going somewhere, and my phone was ringing a lot. And I, you know, you know, <laughs> you know, I don't, don't answer your phone. Everybody yeah. knows I don't answer phones and texts. I hate don't get phones me and technology. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> eventually, the phone wouldn't stop ringing, and it was my mother. And my mother's a. She's funny. I mean, obviously, she's in her 80s. 
And, you know, when someone calls for me, she'll like, oh, yeah, I forgot. And I'm like, what? The FBI was here. This was when I was when I was active, you know, when I was in, when oh, yeah. when I was in trouble. Yeah. And I'm like, Ma, I asked you a hundred times. Did anybody come by the house? You told me the electric company. <laughs> now she tells me that's, that's a really, she tells me the FBI. But now I got to sidetrack a story. Or does, so, does she say it like Johnny, the FBI was here? She, yeah, so she tells me, she tells me a guy. <laughs> they need you. No, listen to this. <laughs> they need your help. She, she tells me a guy was here and they're asking about Danny Marino. So I says, Danny Marino and a guy and he's an electric company. So I says, put my brother on the phone. And we're joking Jimmy about Brown? Is that yeah, Jimmy Brown? yeah, yeah. So we're talking about Dan, no Danny Marino. So I'm joking. I says he's talking about the Miami quarterback, joking around. Oh, I knew, <laughs> I know they meant Danny Marino yeah. gangster. Yeah. So, so who's Danny Marino? So everybody knows he's a captain in Gambino family. Okay. And, you know, he's an older guy now, you know. But uh, he, back then he was a pretty famous guy and in, in the mob. And uh, <laughs> so you know, I said to him, "What did they want?" Because she's telling me it's the electric company. <laughs> <laughs> and she goes, they wanted to talk to you. I said, did he leave a card? And I said, put my brother on the phone. So my brother's laughing. He goes, yeah, they were looking for the Miami. They wanted to know about the Miami Dolphins football uh, quarterback. Mm. So I started joking about, because you know, there was a famous spike. You remember? I don't know if you know. Yeah, fake I'm, spike. I'm at the game. The Jets. Listen, I'm at the game. I'm with my friend Timmy. He's an attorney, right? Hey, Timmy, hello. I was just talking to him earlier. And he, you know, he's got the uh, season tickets. And... Uh, Marino fakes the spike and throws a touchdown. He thinks I'm a Jet fan, Timmy. You know, I am a Jet fan. I mean, was at the time, I'm a Dallas Jet fan on both. And I got the Jet jacket on, and I jump up instinctively, and I go, yes. And he looks at me, I go, fuck the Jets. I bet the Dolphins. Son of a Yeah, so even Timmy was left. <laughs> so anyway, that's my mother. So now when I'm driving, she calls me about ABC contacted her. So I said, uh, who was it? She goes, geez, I don't remember. I go, what was their number? She goes, I don't remember. I go, what do they want? She goes, I don't know. They called a couple of times. And then I, and so I went through the rituals I always do. And I says, put my brother on the phone. <laughs> and then he tells me. And then I checked my messages on my phone. And it was ABC. And so I made the phone call. And I talked to a, a, a woman, very nice woman, actually. We had a good discussion. And, you know, they were interested in talking about... Uh, podcast exactly what we you know what we do and you know and i says what's the subject and if it's a positive message that was just nbc nbc not abc nbc yeah did i was say that, abc yeah, you said abc yeah i'm getting that from my mother yeah, I, I, <laughs> well my mother, Rob, it's my mother's fault she confused today's me. show is nbc yeah 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 it's nbc yeah so is, I, I think we had it up there yeah, right we have it so uh you know, we discussed, you know, what is it going to be about? There it is. And uh, they said it'd be about podcasts. And he says, as long as it's a positive message about the, keeping kids off the street, which you guys know I'm obsessive about it. And so, you know, they had that discussion with me about, you know, if it's a positive message, I says, that, you know, yeah, then I'm interested. And it went from there, a couple of conversations. And uh, eventually I talked to the people that work for me and work with me, my uh, manager, uh, I talked to another woman that handles a lot of the, you know, the paperwork and and different things for bookings, and and we set up a conversation for a meeting, and we went into a uh, studio, and we went to our other studio in Brooklyn, and uh, we discussed, you know, the podcast exactly, thing. The now, podcast. when you did this, when this was presented to you, did you think it was just going to be you, like solo you? Oh, it, the way it was, it was uh, given to me. I thought it was going to be just me. I thought it would be uh, maybe law enforcement, like they always do. Right, right. Somebody like yourself or somebody that would come in and comment on exactly what we're doing. But I would, I didn't think it would be involved. How, 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 don't get to that punchline just yet. How many times and how often and how long was this process that you went through? Like one meeting, two meetings, five meetings? No, how many was, hours? It was a couple of conversations on the telephone and then it was... No, but no, when you went to see them. Oh, I went to see him. It was only a one. So, one, so one day, one day, and it was uh, about two two hours. Okay, so you sat down for a two hour interview. Essentially, yeah, essentially. Yeah. But now we see. If I don't want to get too far ahead, but we see you walking in the street. Was that another meeting? Another day? The same day? Same day. You know, a, a lot of these shows, which you know, you do a lot of these shows. They do a lot of. Uh, it depends on who it is. They want a, a natural 
acting moment, whether it's you getting dressed, whether it's you driving your car, whether it's... Firing a couple you know, of rounds. Yeah, yeah. when I did, you know, <laughs> I did Showtime, 60 Minutes, yeah. sports show, and they'll, you know, they'll do things with you driving or whatever, joking or, well, you know, seriously, if you could fire a couple of rounds, they, they'd probably oh, like sure. that and also. You're actually. not allowed, though. You're not no, allowed. but I'm not allowed, you know, to yeah. do things like that. You got it. Yeah. Well, they, they probably won't let you know after, uh, what's his name, Baldwin. Baldwin? Who's the guy? Who's yeah, yeah, Al Alec Baldwin. Baldwin. Yeah, yeah. Well, that wasn't too bright. And he changed his story about five times. I noticed. Yeah. So I don't know That's who's advising him. And he's, yeah. I didn't hit the trigger. I pressed this. I mean, you know. You got to stick to one in this situation. Listen, and then it better be damn good. It's not right? looking good. It's a ridiculous story yeah. that he's given. I mean, he should just shut his mouth like his yeah. wife or was his wife or his girlfriend. She actually tried a couple of times to shut him up. Yeah. I got to tell you, she was pretty like a little pit bull. I liked her because the way she was trying to protect him. Why don't these motherfuckers say, talk to my lawyer? Doesn't he realize there's a woman yet? Yeah, you know why? Ego. 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 He's trying to prove himself. Instead of just shutting up, but his ego won't allow him. And I got to tell you something, and I don't want to say he deserves what he gets because a poor woman died, then another guy got shot. I mean, he's an imbecile because he always had a big mouth with everybody else, and now he's facing it. And this is the problem with a lot of people. You know, when they're in that hot seat, they don't like it. But when somebody else is in a hot oh, yeah, seat, you fun. do a lot of talk. A lot of fun, yeah. So, a lot of you know, fun for you to make some You pointed somebody. that gun at somebody, and you got to be an imbecile to point it at somebody. I don't care if, if you're in a movie business or whatever. You never point the gun at anybody. But anybody how, if he thought it, how if he thought it was blanks? Well, you're supposed to check. He, uh, he is the actor, as the actor is supposed to check? Well, there's or a the person the, that gives it to there's, there's people that are hired. There's two people that are supposed to check that gun prior. But as the actor, I believe he had the position also because he was part producer of the show that he had to check. He should have checked anyway, and I would check, or anybody with a half a brain that respects weapons or knows anything about weapons, you never not check a gun. And when you hand it to somebody, you don't hand it pointing at them. You hand it down, you, 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 you disengage. Yeah, there's, there's a proper way. There's a proper, there's a proper way to way, move, yeah. uh, handle a gun. And anybody who's been around weapons, yeah. that's the first thing they teach you. Right? Now, now the you podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. That's H-E-L-P www.betterhelp.com slash mafia truth. Is there something interfering with your happiness or preventing you from achieving your goals? You know, everybody knows I'm constantly talking about this. I think the best thing that we could talk about is therapy for anybody. There's times when I get so frustrated and I was used to my old style of behavior and with better help, uh, it's a phone call away. You get on the phone. No matter what's going on in your life, you don't have to travel. You make that quick call, and it can change the way you feel, and, and you go on with your day and your week and your month. So I'm, you know, I'm a big advocate for it. BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. You can start communication in under 48 hours. It's not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It is professional therapy done securely online. There is a broad range of experience expertise available which may not be locally available in many areas this service is available for clients worldwide you can log into your account anytime and send a message to your therapist you'll get timely and thoughtful responses plus you can schedule weekly video or phone sessions you won't ever have to sit in an uncomfortable waiting room as with traditional therapy better help is committed to facilitating great therapeutic masters so if at any time you need to change therapist no problem it's more affordable than traditional offline therapy, and financial aid is available. BetterHelp wants you to start living a happier life today. Visit their website and read their testimonials that are posted daily at www.betterhelp.com slash reviews. BetterHelp review 261,504. Judy has helped me work through so many issues. I'm beyond grateful for Judy. BetterHelp review 200,502. Andy is the man. I feel like he actually cares. He's been a tremendous help already. Special offer for Mafia Truths with John A. Light. Listeners get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash mafia truths. Promo code mafia truth. Oh, you fire a gun. Now, you've been handle. on a lot of TV shows, you know, Vice City, all that. In any of the TV shows you've been on, National Geographic, fuck, I see you everywhere. Yeah. Literally, even now. He's on at least once a week. I see you. Yeah. If I get home in time or I'm done working, in any of those shows, did they ever use a stunt gun? Yeah, they. Like you've seen. Yes. 
And when they handed it to the actor to use the stunt gun, that actor, you saw the actor check it? When we were in Europe, I did a lot of shows in Europe and TV. They handed me a machine gun. They handed me a Glock. They handed me different... And any time they handed me as, as a, a thing, I've always checked it, even fake guns. And people say, why are you checking it? It's just because it's just something. If you're going to point that gun and move it around, you should be checking it and you should secure it and you should make sure there's nothing in that gun that can hurt another individual. But you never point the gun at anybody, never. So when you're, you're, you're an actor and you have that gun in your hand, and Alec Baldwin actually used guns and fired guns and he hunts and different things. So he knows better and he's been on a set his whole life. So there's no excuse on his end that he's trying to, to, to give for, for firing that weapon. See, I, di I didn't know that he hunted and shoot it and whatever. So although he used the gun in, in a different way, he used the gun many he times before, too, so right. he should naturally know just from rhythm, right? right. Listen, check. if I was at the Rittenhouse, and I brought this up on the Rittenhouse trial, right? The, the prosecutor? prosecutor yeah. that oh, my God. So if I was the judge, I would have stopped it, abused him, threw him out of the courtroom yeah. Yeah. because he took a, a weapon and pointed it. And I'm saying to myself, why isn't the, and the judge really, I don't know how he held himself because that prosecutor's got to be one of the Im biggest imbecile i ever seen on a lot of fronts. You know, he didn't handle the case right. Yeah, handle, yeah. He didn't do anything the right. Case was handled. Uh, the weapons, the way he spoke, I mean, just everything. The way he tried to get a mistrial. The guy really was a complete imbecile. You couldn't get a worse guy in there to prosecute the case. So, Do you think if Rittenhouse would have had a, uh, a good prosecutor, he would have lost? No, no. No, you think he would have won? Listen, here's what the media doesn't tell you, and a lot of media. First off, you have two double pedophiles that are in the case. That I didn't know that. Yeah. So, so they, you know. they proved your point. Did you know that? Yeah, yeah. I did. You, you? You have convicted. You have a guy that beat up his grandmother and punched her in the face. So you're not talking to me. You're talking about low-life crimes. Right, so that's first. The media, whether they knew it or not, they hid it. Why are you hiding it? So you know this is a, a thing. Second, they had the witness that did live said he pointed his gun first at Rittenhouse. You know, so yeah. Let me write that in there. Can I go home now? Well, they, uh, uh, yeah. Can I go home? And then they did what they always do now. They try to. They covered that up like a my my the woman I really dislike is a couple, but Joy Reed. I dislike because she's always trying to cause uh, disarm, racial division. Disarm, racial, racial division. Racial division. Yeah. When there is none. And Joy, no and reason. what's the other one, Joy from The View? Oh, yeah. she's okay. the worst. But oh. here's the thing with her. Oh. She's just completely dumb. Yeah. yeah. So when she talks, she, you know, she's Behar. talking. Behar. Yeah. Behar. And I love for her since she's filthy rich and she's always complaining. And the show is called The View. But if you give <laughs> your view. What view? view? Uh, they uh, attack, our view. <laughs> they, yeah. Oh, it's one view. view. It should be yeah. a third view. The Let, view. <laughs> let's have a discussion, but you're not allowed to discuss whatever you feel, only what we feel. So th there goes that. But she doesn't give her job to a nice Indian girl or Arab girl or black girl or Spanish because she wants to talk about you know, racial injustice, because she's another one that wants to talk shit, but she's a multi-millionaire, and she's hogging that position at, as an employee for how long now? And has no idea you know, what it's like. I love when, I, listen, I love Condoleezza Rice. Democrat, very educated, beautiful woman, articulate. When she went on the show, they all shut up, because she didn't give the answers they thought she was going to give. She and talked about self-advocating, and she talked about self-education, and she talked about respect. She wasn't talking about victimization. Yes. All right. Well, and and I saw her, and they couldn't bait her. They couldn't yeah, bait her. Right. She right. didn't go for the bait. She's smart of a woman. Yeah. You know, I like Loretta Lynch. Everybody knows I like her too. You know, she's, you know, these are are uh, very very intelligent women. Forget about what color, because I hate we always got to bring up color because yes. everybody does this. These are a, a very intelligent women. You, if you disagree or agree with them, doesn't matter. That's not the subject. The subject is they're highly intelligent. When you're speaking to these type of women that are, that are very intelligent and you have a dummy like Joy from The View, just talk about housewife stuff because you're too stupid to talk about anything else. And I'm, and you know, and she deserves to get a blasted lot of by a lot of people. Would put her to shame. A yeah. lot of housewives would put her to shame. <laughs> and, uh, and, in a second, I'm going to tell you one of the dumbest things she said. So I'll give you why she's so dumb. Now, if you're going to bring up a subject, at least know what you're talking about. She goes, I don't understand why everybody blames Joe Biden for the gas prices. And I'm like, <laughs> you dumb millionaire. 
I don't want to use the word I want to Just say. fucking use it. I don't say, bitch. Thank you, John. You, you, uh, I just got hard I now, that, too. I, I tried not off. to do it, but I'm going to tell you why. No beep. I'm going to say, how about talking about that he closed down the oil lines, you dummy? Yeah. So, you know, she's too stupid because, you know, she's so detached from the real world that people don't have this kind of money that she has. But yet she talks nonsense like she's... Uh, you know, she's advocating for somebody. Get the fuck out of your seat and give it to somebody else now if you really mean what you say. They're just full of shit. That's why I can't hear. I can't stand hearing them. They're terrible. And I, I want to get into your thing, but I have a really good question for you. So, and you too. So with, you know, like they're against the fucking fossil fuel shit and go all electric. Okay, well, what's worse? Gas that well, you get at the gas station or battery? Well, I'm going to tell you what about battery. With lithium? You okay. are, we both already know the answer, but... The Congo is where that... That what those minerals come the from. Lithium. Correct. Yeah, the minerals. Pork sack. Now, when, when she talks about slave work and shit, yes, it's slave work. Number one, two, it's owned by Hunter Biden and the Chinese. Mm -hmm. So now you're back to giving a Chinese communist country control of us running our our cause here. Now the whole, the so whole they got idea, our medicine, they got our clothes. That's our enemy feeding us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's like telling a guy when I was on the street, he has all the weapons and everything, and I'm going to listen to you, and you're trying to kill me. Yeah, right. So th they're not our, uh, they're, they're not our friends, right? But when they talk like this, here's the problem, and I said this again since Joy, what's her last name? Behut. Behut. This dummy wants to talk about you know these 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 uh, minerals that are owned by China, two thirds, that how is the kids from my neighbor gonna afford these brand new cars? So it's again, it's a racist, it's a, it's a racist in, in, inequality of your position. It's for people with money that can buy these cars. If you don't have money, how are they gonna buy it? They don't care because they have an agenda here. And since two thirds of it's in the Chinese hands and a third of it is in Hunter Biden's hands, they don't care that those kids from my neighborhood Black, Spanish, Indian, white, green, blue, it doesn't matter what color. They can't afford that. This is for, this, when these cars come out, it's for the high. Well, if they had an OnlyFans page. They, well, it's for the wealthy. Who else is going to buy these th cars? If they had an OnlyFans yeah, page. Yeah, OnlyFans page. They have an OnlyFans page. Maybe so they maybe, could buy one maybe of Maybe Joy Behart, whatever her name is, is going to buy everybody a car. Right, but they're, they're pushing... The electric cars for the climate bullshit. That's but, not but the, for climate. You got more. You have more. I'm telling you what they're pushing to the media. I know. What I mean, to the citizens. Okay, okay. Th there's also climate problems with these battery operated. Way more. Way more. So they're not telling anybody yet. But I don't care about that. I don't care about the politics of it. I care about the kids from my neighborhood that always say the same thing. We cannot afford those cars. We can't go out and buy a car. For, you can buy out a used car for five hundred, a seven hundred, and twelve hundred, and fifteen hundred, and three thousand to get your kids back and forth to schools. If you give us school choice, which they don't want to do, and it's a fight for but that. My, my main question is, why don't they say the negativeness of like, the electric like, car, like like like, all, like they do with the gas, like the environmental right. damage? It's ripping up the uh, the topsoil, the tree yeah. atmosphere, yeah. The mountains. Why do you think they're so into this electric water? Car why? Money? Political so, money, like political everything. Money. It's politics. It's a shift. It's a I, shift. I was hoping it was something different, but... Listen, how... They're China, get, they're, they, they, they make, China makes plastic from sewer water, you know that? Do you, they know cook the, the do you know what the environment is in China and in India? Oh, I know. And you're going to let them control the environment? That's what they're doing. It's on. a joke what they're saying. <laughs> yeah. And people are ignorant. I, I did a, a talk with you about this already. Yeah. They went, to climate, they went to the climate meeting with 85, an encore of 85 cars following each other. And then you have 400 and something airplanes going there, private jets. This is a joke. This yeah. is insulting. It really is. It really is. So the Today Show, you did the Today Show. Oh, yeah, yep. I forgot about yeah. the Today Show. <laughs> yeah. So you get called to the Today Show. You go there. You put a, you put a, I see a, a sort of clip. You put some couple outfits on. Do you have to? Do you, is this, the, is it, yep. this, this is it here, right? Yep. Yeah, so you, uh, how did they treat you? I mean, were they nice to you? Were they? Yeah. I, I mean, were, were you scumbagging? Were they like were trying to treat you? Law? I mean, I don't know. No, no. The, the woman that ran the project, uh, I believe her name was Sylvie. Very nice woman. Very, they're always very nice, to be honest with you. I mean, the people that I've ever dealt with, any show I've dealt with, they're always very polite. They're nice. The problem is their agenda and our agenda yeah. are two different it's never things. The same. It's never the same. And they got to answer to their executives and bosses. And 
we only want what we want out of the show. And what I want out of the show was what I would say, the truth to the kids. I want the kids to know so they don't end up suffering and ruining their lives and other people's lives in the interim. So forget about me suffering, like I always say. The people that I was involved with on my own family and strangers and friends, anybody who touched my life, they suffered. And you know, whether they're your enemy or not, their family suffered or whatever. And that's the message I want for the kids. Hey Rob, can you play that clip? Yep, here we go. A look at any chart of top podcasts is a walk through dozens of unsolved murders, missing persons, or just something amiss in any town USA. Now joining the ever-growing collection of popular true crime podcasts is a subgenre hosted by the criminals themselves, namely infamous vicious mobsters who are finding big audiences, even among curious law enforcement, while detailing their lives of crime. NBC's Kevin Tibbles has our Sunday Spotlight. From Salvatore Sammy the Bull Sammy the Bull. Stop that. One of the most feared <laughs> mobsters. Stop that. <laughs> so he says, Sammy the Bull, one of the most feared mobsters of all time. Can you back that up a minute? Yep. I'm sorry. Yep. Let me cut you. There we go. Ready? Where are we at? Right, right there. Stop right. Go right there. Uh, go a little tell further. Him to stop. A little further. Has our Sunday yeah, what do you, spotlight. What do you see the thing? Keep going. Stop right there. Salvador What's this? Sammy the Bull stop. Back it. Back it up right again. There. Right there. Right there. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. Here's why I have a problem being on these shows, okay? I don't have a problem with the people I work with that are running the, the show because obviously they're, they're working for a company. Right. They, they so. want a certain thing for their ratings and whatever image they want, I really don't know, right? Yeah. But this isn't RCA radio. This isn't a music producer. This isn't Fat Man Scoop. <laughs> this is a guy... <laughs> man scoop, right? right? Fat man's my friend. Oh, okay, I don't know. Great, right, 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 you know, great, great DJ. Oh, okay. man, yeah, yeah. Oh, I don't know. You know I heard the, you know, I heard the name, but I thought maybe you just made that oh, one. Up. No, no, <laughs> he's gonna, one of the best DJs. <laughs> okay, great. I, I, you, I, you never introduced me yeah, to him. Yeah, you know? I'm right, gonna well, introduce you. Got to do that. All right, good. This is a guy that's. It's like he's this, got a gold album. He, 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 he looks like a gold album. I've been in. I've been. I have you want platinum? Yeah, the platinum. <laughs> I've been. Yeah, I've been in an entertainment attorney's office. And when you go into an entertainment attorney's office, all on the wall is these gold and platinum records and albums with like Madonna on it. Right. You know, that's what this looks like. He said. <laughs> <laughs> This is an egotistical. The front of my, if I put on newspaper articles, I'm, I have no room in the house. <laughs> yeah. The front pages. Come on, for real. But this is a nothing real. positive to be saving in your house on a wall on a on a in a frame. I mean, so think about now I'm doing this show for a reason, right? And you have this guy who's a, an adult, old man, grandfather, that's like a nine-year-old child that thinks that's a baseball picture and you're in Little League and you won the most valuable player. But that's getting the ratings. I understand that. And that's the difference of what I want well, and what the media wants. Agreed. Wait, wait, wait. But what is he, what do you think? We don't, we don't, we can't know what he wants, but clearly he's trying to glamorize mm -hmm. rather than downplay. No, am I wrong? A hundred percent, you're I mean, right. That's what it looks like, I mean. What is he glamorizing? Right. Though? I don't, well, I don't know. Can you roll that a little further? Yep, I'll play Sammy the Bull Gravetta. Sammy the Bull, one of the most feared mafia hitmen of was all time. Was he really feared? One of the feared. Okay, so you're. Was he answer. really feared? I don't. And I don't. And I asked that question because you work with these people. Okay. I didn't work with them. We all heard of Sammy the Bull, but only time I heard of Sammy the Bull was when Gotti was, was when Gotti was arrested. In his prime, in Sammy's prime, was he the most feared mob guy at that time? No, Whether the, he was the one who was telling somebody else to do it or not. Oh, you this know, is ridiculous. You want to talk about feared hitmen? You want to talk about feared guys? Then let's talk about Anthony Gaspipe. All right? If, who cares? He was known to be crazy. Boy. Yeah. Well, that's okay. fear, right? So <laughs> when you have Anthony Gaspipe, and Sammy did some talks about Anthony Gaspipe. Now, I'll show you, when you're, you're dealing with the public, the public doesn't know what's true or what isn't true because they don't understand this life. But guys like me, they don't like because I know the, the truth and I know the ins and outs. So um, detrimental to their image of bullshit. So when you have a guy that shot nine, had 19 murders, right? Attributed to, attributed to him. 
attributed to him, and he only shot the gun once. Once. Now, anybody can look at the paperwork. One time. Out of 19 murders. Now, if you're that feared, most feared gangster, then that means you need to take out the most feared gangster, a guy like Anthony Gaspipe, Castle. And I'm going to give you an example to back up what I'm saying. If you're supposedly the underboss and you say you're the most feared man and you go on your podcast and call Anthony Castle a dope and he's not this and he's not that because the man's dead now. But at the time, Anthony Castle was behind Eddie Lino being killed. The the corrupt the cops, cops. The cops killed him. Epolito and uh, I was in, I was, Carol Cole. I, was, I was in with Lino's brother. Okay. Yeah. So Eddie was a, a friend of ours, right? Made guy, good guy. He gets killed. We all know it's the Lucchese family, Genovese family. Specifically, who? It doesn't matter. We know the bosses are coming back at us for the murder of Paul Castellano because it was their opinion was an unsanctioned commission hit. Okay, that's another thing we can later on talk about. But before Eddie gets killed, Frankie DeChico gets blown up. Right, shortly after the murder. So you got Frankie DeChico gets blown up. You have Eddie Lino that's killed. And then five years to the date, you have from the Frankie DeChico, you have Bobby Boriello who's killed on the front steps of his Brooklyn house. Right? These are all made guys with our family, the Gambino family, that Sammy claims he's the most feared guy. So if you're the most feared guy, why didn't you kill anybody back when they're killing our guys? Because he ain't a killer. And he hid for cover from Anthony K. So gas pipe. And if he didn't hide for cover, why wasn't anybody killed? Why wasn't Anthony Gaspipe killed? So you're talking about this guy that he's a nobody and he's a dummy. But meanwhile, he just killed everybody around you. So now you got this thing here. He, he's, he's killed, uh, he killed Castellano and Bellotti. What's his, Bellotti? Bil <coughs> Tommy, Tommy, Tommy Bellotti, right? Tommy. Tommy. So he says he, he said, the, I, we passed it over, I think, in the film. But he says he, he didn't, because it's funny how the guy asks him, and you did this hit? And he says, uh, I planned it. That's a complete lie, too. Right, so you don't, So he didn't plan this? No. I talk about Johnny all the time. He was a gangster's gangster. Well-liked, drove a Harley motorcycle, had speedboats, was a fun guy and a tough guy. Anybody that says anything different about him is full of shit. This is a guy that was a killer. This is a guy that was well-liked. This was a guy that was well-respected. This is a guy that not only told you to do it, but he did it. This is the guy that was planning this hit. So the guys that don't know, Sammy Govano, prior to this hit, was just a made guy. He was nothing else but a made guy. So when Paul gets hit here, he's driving in a car with John Gotti Sr., right? He didn't plan it. He was there, a made guy only, not an underboss, okay, well, during this hit. So he's trying to exaggerate his role in this. So how, how did this hit go down? So so wait a minute, hold on. They hold on. Okay. You got a guy in the middle of the street, Manhattan. Now, what street is Sparks on? It's 50? Four, no, what is Sparks on? 46? 40, he's in the low, low, middle 40s, almost 50, right around. Yeah, yeah, so theater, it doesn't matter. The other district. Yeah. Yeah. So theater district, December what? 16th. December 16th. Uh, it's in the 80s, because I can see by the car, right? And it's probably, the street's probably jammed full with people, because I, from what I heard back then, there was many onlookers, many onlookers, yeah. right? So here's a body that's covering half the street. You got the car parked there. Where did uh, so I, from what I understand, now I, I wasn't there, and I'm not, I'm not even taking anyone's side here. I'm, I'm asking the questions like as a cop sort of investigate and make believe, right? Where did Sammy say he did? He drove past the body, or did he just pass the neighborhood? Because how do you pass this body in the middle of the street? Well, buddy, he might have had a helicopter. From what I understand, there was a cop right near there, by the way. From, there was. From what I understand, there was a cop right near there when yes. the shooting took place. Because they said... Because it's the Diamond District. Am I wrong? Afterwards, uh, uh, 46th Street is the Diamond District. Yeah, it's, uh, it's the Diamond can District. Can you look up what street the Sparks is exactly on? Cause I now, why would they myself. have a cop there? No, it just happened to be in the street. It just happened. No, 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 you know, what you got to realize is, 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 is Christmas season? 
Mm-hmm. There's 50 cops walking around the street here, walking right. right around that whole area constantly. So you got to be bold to step up and make that shoot. And then what are you going to do? Drive by and like, like spike the ball? Are you going to drive by and do a spike? You ain't going to be anywhere near that yeah, thing. Yeah, it's 46th Street. I told you. It's 46th Street. Right. Okay. You know how I knew? Because I afterwards I did a show here with George uh, Anastasia. We did a... Uh, 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 sit down a little... A, a, little we little did steak, it with... Um, little steak job? <laughs> and, and, <laughs> little steak job? And, and, and I'll tell you about <laughs> the Spark Steakhouse. Yeah. It's, it's all Albanian. It will run there and work there and everything. So of I knew a lot of guys there. So when I do the show outside Sparks, it's very, a very congested spot. Yeah. You can't even drive down there. So there's a body in the street and Sammy's driving by? I mean, I'm it's just... Impossible. It's impossible. So, it's a but lot. He's, but he said he drove... You would need a bulldozer to get through there or a helicopter to go over it. I, I think what Mike's trying to say is, was Sammy even there? Was he there? That's what I'm getting. No, he's there with John. He was there. He was at the scene? He was in the car with John a couple blocks away. Oh, but he wasn't there. He wasn't there. He's nowhere near. Okay, that. all right. So he was. He, he didn't plan the murder. John Gotti did. Guys like Johnny Knig did, and Sammy was a made guy that was driving. That's it. That's 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 what Sammy. He was. drove who John that day. I guess? He was with John. I, f- I forget who was the driver. I think John actually was driving the car, and Sammy was a pet. So John Gotti planned it, from what you know, and then. Well, he had to approve it for certain. I don't know if he planned. Did he plan all? Yeah, the he planned. John nuts and bolts. Yeah. yeah, and then the shooter. They set the appointment at Sparks for Paul to come and have a sit down and talk to him. And, okay. And, you know, and that's what Okay, it, all right. The shooters were, there was uh, several guys around. Uh, the guy who was around, Vinny Toro was, I believe he passed away. His gun jammed. There was other guys around, supposedly Tony Roach, uh, Jeannie Gotti. So there was several other guys around. Damn, how many people now, went to hit him, like ready to, sh- to pop? Uh, about six guys. Wow. Total. So, they really wanted to make sure... Well, you're going to make sure he's dead because yeah. if you don't kill him, you got a war on your hands. Right. Now, at that point, Sammy's a made guy, right? That's it. Frankie DiCicco is the the guy that's really running things behind the scenes with John Gotti Sr. And he had no problem with John running and becoming a boss and him taking the underboss spot. Sammy doesn't get elevated until Frankie DiCicco gets blown up. When he gets blown up in the car... John needs to elevate the next guy. And he asks Frankie Lacasio, who's from the Bronx, who just passed away in prison. And he asks Frankie, do you want to take the position as underboss? Frankie was a very low-key guy. He had a lot of Albanians around him. Uh, he had a guy, Zeph, around him, different people, Albanians. And his son was around Tory and different guys. Now, when John asks Frankie to take the position, he goes, I don't want it. He don't want the heat. He don't want the heat. He does. He's very low key. He's. I'll, I'll be an advisor still, but that's it. So John's got to give it to somebody. Now who's he going to give it to? He's got to give it to one of these guys that were in on that hit, so he knows they're going to be loyal to him, not try to sneak him after they hit a guy. Right. So he's got to bring it to somebody in Brooklyn because Frankie, the Chico's gone. So he's limited of who he can trust and give it to, and he also wants to give it to somebody he can control completely. So he gives it to. Sammy Gravano. He elevated Sammy after the hit to an acting skipper and gave him a crew. To protect his own ass. Well, after the hit. It was yeah. everybody got a position after that. Now, before you go on something you said earlier, it was an unsanctioned hit. Well, you know, John's saying it's sanctioned because what John did, he put Joey Scopo in a faction of the Colombo family, he split him off. So he had the approval of one boss. He's saying he, he's a boss of the, the Gambino family or at the time the regime of guys. Or uh, the before he's officially the boss uh, of the Gambino family, so that's two. When he, he reenacts the Bonanno family and Joe Messina because they got kicked out of commission because of the drug cases, so he says he has three p three families that are okay in the hit. So he said he didn't break the commission rules. That's but don't you need answer. five? No, there's five families in the commission. I thought you, you needed need three. all five. Huh? No, and you have the Lucchese family and you have the. Uh, Genovese family that are, are obviously are mad about it and they want revenge. And you have Persico, who's with the Colombo family, who's not okay with it either. So you have a split, really. That's but on split. John's that, that's end, probably caused the Colombos to split. Was maybe this whole well, the Colombos after they were all gave each other up, and later on the Bonanno family in the two thousands, they all gave each other up. And yeah, well, so you know, but that back then it wasn't the belief of this nonsense of our thing, wait, wait, wait. and the, and you know the message that he's selling of, I believe, in uh, Cosa Nostra to the end, then you wouldn't have cooperated. Now, I was three years old when this happened. 
wasn't Paul the boss of the boss of bosses? Yeah. Paul, Paul Castellano, listen, Paul Castellano that's was a, yeah. That's what I thought. But I yeah. wasn't, I'm not in their crew. <laughs> and I, oh, I'm asking because to take out the boss of bosses, I mean, fuck. Well, Paul Castellano had a great relationship with the Genovese family and, and Giganti because he brought, listen, like any business I've talked about this, any CEO, any company that's structured, it's about money. So, of course, Paul's well-liked because he's making billions, not millions, billions. He was an incredible businessman. Forget about them all. And he had a great relationship with the other families because he's bringing them money. So if me and you were partners and we're doing this and somebody kills one of us, of course we're mad because you're hurting our pocket. It has nothing to do with just the relationship. It has to do with money. You're destroying the financial ends of these other families. And that's why they structure things the way they do. They structure it because you don't take out a sitting boss, although it happens. They, they try to structure it this way so you can't hurt the financial end of all these families and relationships. Now, they say he was cheap, but they say he was quiet. Now, was that cheap a uh, stigma put out there to justify him getting taken out? Of course, you're going to have people that were happy with him, and then you're going to have factions that are against him. So the faction that's trying to take him out, and John Gotti, again, is very intelligent. He's no dummy. He knows how to maneuver people with the dollar bill and with his personality. Charisma was So, you know, yeah. and you got the other faction, the Gambino family, the, the Gambinos, that weren't happy with it. And they want John up there. They don't want John. They and you had one faction that was Paul there, that they want Paul there. The difference is John and the guys that take him out, Frankie De Chico, were the muscle. They were young guys. The the faction so this Paul is, were older. So... so this is not something you expected to actually be going to be seen on on the Today Show program when you did it. Like you didn't expect um, Sammy the Bull to be in no it, with you. Not at all. I didn't know Sammy was. going You didn't to be even on the show. know that they were mixing you together. No, no, no. I wouldn't have did it. To be there, honest. There, I know you. I wouldn't have did the show. I, I I know that for sure. All right, keep playing it. <clears throat> Go back like ten seconds. All right, there you go. And just play it through. It's on cool. a tour of his dark and checkered past. That's the Castellano head. <coughs> and you did it. I planned it. The 1985 killing of mobster Paul Castellano outside a New York restaurant was just one of 19 murders Gravano had handed. The shooters are ready. My heart is pounding. <laughs> now, after decades <coughs> behind bars and witness protection, Sammy shares stories of the secret society very publicly. I pause it. Heart. This episode of The Elite Show is brought to you by Fume. That's F-U-M. Go to www.breathethefume.com slash elite. Use the code elite to get 10% off. It's time to quit smoking naturally. Hey, John, you know, I started with the, the Fume I was smoking four cartridges a day. I got down to one. I'm sticking at one right now. I'm comfortable. And hopefully by the end of the month, New Year's resolution, maybe I'll be done altogether. No smoke, no vape, no harmful chemicals. Flavorful plant-packed cores to reduce cravings and support recovery. Fume makes the gap to nicotine-free easier with a natural inhaler that curbs cravings and supports recovery. Quit naturally today and save 10% off with code ELITE. That's www dot breathe the fume dot com slash elite use the code elite to save 10 percent off enjoyable and comfortable because who said smoking had to suck hey so i have families that smoke family members that smoke i have friends that smoke they all used it and uh it helped them quit so i'm a believer once again that's www dot breathe the fume dot com slash elite use the code elite for 10 percent off saying he's in witness protection right but he's on 3,000 podcasts. He's on national TV, so on and so forth. That's just the beginning. So my, I got two questions for you. One, how don't they put him back in jail forever when he gets hit with the ecstasy? And two, how can you be in witness protection and do all this? Obviously, he's not in witness protection. You or know, he is not I mean, do you... You know, he... You, you, you know, I did the other show with you awesome. about betrayal. And he had a reputation through his life. No matter what he says, it doesn't matter because he betrays everything on his way, including the government and the FBI. When they gave him a chance, he went out and he sold drugs. So how he's 
he didn't get life. I don't know. Maybe he was still working with them and helping them with all the cases, so they didn't hammer him, hammer him. Um, which is, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. I'm not the prosecutor or the, or the agents that were involved with him. But he got away again. He got lucky. Now he comes home, and he's on parole, and guys like my old podcast partner, Gene, isn't allowed to be on these shows because he's got paper. So I don't know how he's allowed to have to be able to be on these shows, to, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. Especially because some of the things he's talking about, um, he's talking about I should have killed Rudy Giuliani on one of the shows. That you should have? He should have. Oh, he I like Rudy Giuliani. He's I don't talk against him. Is he crazy? I talk like a, a, an adult, not... I don't talk about... I don't talk like I'm 30 anymore or 25 years old that I was raised in this life and and I was believed in it and then you're brainwashed or whatever you want to use, whatever it's... I, I understand that this is a negative life, so I don't talk like that. And I talk about in a positive way again, with Rudy Giuliani. Everybody knows. I do, I've said it on 10 shows. If it wasn't for him, he saved millions of lives in the city. Let's not say because people say exaggerate. Thousands of lives in New York City. And he Rudy, just did his job. Rudy Giuliani. And it's his job and he done it and he done it and he did it well. And he's a gentleman and he's an attorney and he was a mayor and he you know, this is a guy that's got a, a impeccable reputation. So when you're talking like he's talking, I was gonna kill Rudy you, you were gonna kill a lot of people. You didn't kill Rudy Giuliani, you didn't kill you didn't kill uh Paul Castellano, you were there. You didn't kill gas pipe, but you did kill a 15-year-old boy. I said this last time. And he's unapologetic for it because if you're apologetic, you wouldn't have RC rec RC RCA records labels up on your wall of yourself. This is the problem. But isn't that insane from the life that you lived to even talk about killing a politician? That would because just be it's crazy. Such, I want to tell you why I don't think he's in trouble for these things. Because it's such bullshit talk, and everybody knows it's such bullshit talk. Yeah, right. But I just for to, to him say it, it sounds good. But just to say it okay. is insane. C keep rolling. That might be one thing I might not want to say. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I'm, of all things, that yeah. a politician, and out of all of them, Rudy. Yeah. I don't think you want him That's to fuck with him. Shots. Yeah. Rang out in the night air. Stop it now. Bobby sounds like Bobby. sounds like he's selling a movie yeah. script. Shots rang out yeah, in the night air. That's fuck. That's funny. That's actually. Yeah. Can, that's, can you play five seconds out again? Play, I just want to hear him say what funny. everybody talking in the night air. Go back to that's ten. Funny. Go back to one minute, ten seconds. I mean, just selling, it, he's it, selling something here. Go ahead. Shots rang out in the night air. I told the truth. <laughs> Is that like Alfred Hitchcock? Uh, something going on over there. <laughs> Wonderful, the night air, was it cold, hot? Night air. I don't know who takes this serious. The night air. Honestly, it's like a joke. It's an old man that's washed up trying to be relevant. He's got no purpose on what he's doing here. This is the this is the thing that I don't understand. What's the purpose of what you're doing? You know, Rob, continue it. Yep. Okay, okay. Love me, love me, hate me, hate me, whatever it may be. You already love me. Stop it there. Look at this oh, the, what's this? What's this in the back? Oh, his whole family. Yeah, is that it, his family? It's Al Capone. It's Luciano. It's James Cagney. Is that his house? It's it's, uh, it's uh, what are they? Ca it? Carlo Gambino yeah, Carlo, and it's, it's, it's uh, Marlon Brando. That's in Cafe Numero Uno. Just so you guys know, like, look, th this to me is a joke. You know, you know. So the bull up now, and they, they said it. All. The journalist is a nice guy, right? When he talked, he's really a gentleman. He's got to be disgusted when he said that. Honestly, I don't know because, you know, I'd love to is ask him. Is that like him Marilyn that. Monroe in the movie? Is that Marilyn Monroe? I don't For know. For real, look. I can't see what that is. Not right there. He copied off my fucking floor light. But they set it up like that. That's what they did, did that purpose. Yeah. They did that. Yep. Because they put the bull right behind him and everything else. No, it's his studio. Obviously. It's Sammy's studio. I know, so but, Sammy I know, put but it there. Yeah, but I'm saying, but they yeah. strategically shot yeah. that. Yeah, of course. Oh, is that his podcast studio that uh, you're seeing? I don't know. It's his, some sort of studio. He's got pictures up all over there yeah. with his picture of newspaper articles. Yeah, oh. you could keep running it because yeah. this is a ridiculous statement, too. You you like me. <laughs> I'm going to make him an offer he can't refuse. Curiosity with the mob is well documented, including classic movies like The Godfather, Goodfellas, and I laugh every time series, I see that. The Sopranos. All due respect, you got no idea what it's like to be number one. What was it like to pull the trigger that first time? It, it was. Uh... You see, stop it there. 
rewind and show when someone lies they yeah, hesitate yeah, like yeah, this yeah. you see you, you see know this. he went like this idea what it's like to be number one what was it like to pull the trigger that first time it, it was uh oh they cut that was very, that was a cut okay stop yeah, it there yeah he doesn't know really what it is to pull the trigger if we find out how many times he actually pulled the trigger? We know he was only involved in one murder out of 19. So this is just another snow job. And and again, you're only hurting kids by trying to con them about this with all these pictures in the back and he's a shooter and he doesn't know what it is. He don't, I don't even think he remembers how it, what it was to shoot a gun because it was so long ago. He's we removed from the mafia 30 something years. I'm just asking this because you did film. And I'm just curious, not because it's Sammy. They cut that right there, right? That's a cut. Oh, he yeah, asked perfect. the question. It looks like like they waited or perfect. they didn't get the answer they wanted and then they cut to the answer that they did want because they did that to Matt. My guess was They asked probably. Matt the same question 50 times. He said, well, when someone hesitates an answer like that, yeah. it's not a, it's not true. It's it, it's complete. So wrong. the guy says, what does it feel like to pull the trigger? And he probably, let's yeah. speculate. He probably said, <sighs> Okay, like he paused. the reason I asked him was because so Matt goes in for one of these things and they said, Don't you feel bad, Matt? No, I stole from banks. Matt, don't you feel the old man? What's the guy that we like? Oh, um, fuck. He's on twenty twenty, it's the old man. Anyway. So they asked, he Matt said the one thing Matt does is like when it's something like this where he's the beneficial, it's true. If he's the negative, he turns it into the positive on his side, right? So now he said they asked him the same question. Literally 50 times. And then the 50th time, he was like, yeah, I feel bad. Bingo. So now, after 50 times, 50 different ways, when it comes out, it goes to, do you feel bad about what you did to you know people with their mortgages? Yeah, I feel bad. Yeah. And then he right. smiled, laughing right. at him, because he was sick of his gotcha. shit. And, and he, gotcha. And he, he literally looks like this. Yeah, I feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fuck you. Like, yeah, fuck I, you, you I, asked I, me 50 you know, times, you want what you want, here you go. And yeah. then he comes off like an asshole. Right. And, and then they got, they, that's what they wanted. Right. They got what they wanted. Yeah. But the problem here is he's not a shooter. That's I was said yeah, to well, say that. Yeah. So it, it doesn't matter. His answer is going to be fake because he's not a shooter. Yeah. He said it himself. He shot and killed one guy in a 19. But for the, so where's the other shootings? For, for them, what they're looking at the TV, they're saying, well, if we put a guy on here that didn't kill anybody, didn't do anything... That's his story. No one's going to watch it. So right. so, so let me ask for, you. It's all for TV. Right, so let me ask hey. you a question right now. How many people did you shoot? About 30-something people. Okay. What does he say? He I planned I planned. planned 19 of them. Yeah. Yeah. But then he yeah. says he killed 19. No, he no, no. Say he killed. 19. No, he didn't say No, He no. said he planned them. He said he planned them. How about how about I shot six, planned twenty two. Right. I'm just right. Like you said, about thirty, thirty something, maybe forty. Yeah. Maybe fifty, but certainly maybe thirty something. A ton of them. Right. But you you didn't say well well. I planned twenty seven. Mike, you worked the seven five. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Of course. Every it was day. a war zone, right? Every day. Okay. I could show you a ton of kids from our neighborhoods that are like me. Maybe not as many or whatever. But we grow up in a street very violent. We come from a different atmosphere of life. It's a terrible existence, and I'm going to keep saying that so kids really understand it. There is no win living in those neighborhoods doing that. But we can see through guys like him. I don't care what position they gave him, what title. They give people titles all the time. He's the CEO, he's this, and they're not worth their job. He's not an actual, and I don't care who says anything different. He's not a street, street guy. Go to East New York in the 7-5 and I'll show you a ton of street kids yeah. that are black kids and they don't know nothing about this uh, mob stuff. But they're actual street kids getting down. You know why this is really important that you keep bringing up the kid thing right now? Is because with the pandemic, what do you think kids are doing? They're watching YouTube. Right. So the, And then ones that are fascinated by this shit, they're watching this kind of stuff. I want some more than ever. I wanted somebody like him to ask him, "Can you tell us how many people exactly you shot up?" <laughs> well, that's um, my point, John. You said thirty yeah, something. Yeah. He says I planned nineteen of them. But the difference is this: he almost sounds like he's glorifying it in a way yeah. where he should. No, he is. That's all he has. I'm going to tell you why, Mike. I don't want to cut you off. God without damn the, it. without the mafia, he's nothing. He has nothing. Right. He right. doesn't know how to exist. He can't. Outside. So this is his whole world. Right. Right. I'm telling you that part of my life I could give a shit about. It's no good. Right. 
I, I, I but we talk know. about everything here. Right. It's part of our lives, though. Uh, of course, so, we can't erase it. Yeah, so when we, when we qualify a conversation, it comes from the position of strength that we know best, which is the life that we lived. Like, if I talk to you guys about anything, I'm going to throw in, yeah, I, I almost hung, was going to hang myself on the, on, on the uh, fire plug inside the cell because that's part of my life and my experience. Yeah, or, or when I pinched a guy for uh, drugs and uh, I sh- shook him down and let him go. So everything we reference out past but and this is this pisses me off people think i'm glorifying what i did i'm not when i speak me personally I, i'm sure i listen i know you well enough i'm not glorifying what i did but i tell you with the enthusiasm with which i attempted the crime because there is nothing like the thrill of the moment when you're doing the crime, but the fucking price you pay for the rest of your life, you'll never get away from. I'm still paying for it today. And how long has it been? Uh, it was nineteen eight ninety two? I was arrested. Arrested. And most of these crimes happened significantly prior to that. So ninety two, oh two, twelve. It's almost twenty two. It's twenty two. Thirty years. And how long have you been dealing with this shit? Of what? Jail. Distress. My whole all life. Of, since you know, I'm a kid. Since, since I'm 18, 19 yeah. years yeah. old. I ruined families. My Listen, f- you never get your life completely back. Ever. Yeah. This is who you are, like he said, whether we like John, it or not. What, no, what, the only thing you do is you could send a good message to these kids not to follow. What upsets me is that people think when we talk these stories that we're glorifying that life. No, you're right. Or you make it you're seem right. cool, like it was cool to be a corrupt cop. No, no. It was exciting. But it's not the right thing to do. Of course, you know, you go, people go on fucking, they jump off mountains. They, no, they, they climb hills. They do, they do things. It's thrilling. It's exciting. But it still doesn't make it right. No, it was, listen, you're right. I'll be the first guy to say it was an adrenaline rush. I loved the life. I loved the street. I loved the excitement. That's why you did I it. I love putting my life on the line. Every day. It's the extreme thing. When someone jumps out of an airplane, they love that feeling because they're testing death. I test it in a different way, Right. And now I look back in retrospect after everything and you, as you're getting older and you're saying, yeah, it might have been all those things. But trust, I'm telling the kids, find a new way to get adrenaline. Where did it get us? Don't don't so, go into this. So Where did it get us? So in other words, it's all fun and games while you're doing it. But then when the bill comes, it's no longer fun and fucking games anymore. The bill's going to come. That's it's just saying. when is it going to come? I said when and the yes. bill comes. Yes. But the bill comes through my life always. Right. right. I was in jail, I'm out of jail. I'm in jail, I'm out of jail. I got stabbed up, I got baseball. Your family's I got destroyed. Shot. You lost everything yeah. you worked yeah. for. Everything you robbed is gone. So when I say bill, I don't just mean you go to jail. I mean right. the stabbings, being shot out, worried about somebody's going to kill you. Okay, you don't now even you know have, the price. You, might have you don't go- even know the price. You're still right. paying. Right. You're paying every day. Right. And then you're getting, you know, and you're still. Your credibility. You have, everything. It's yeah. the, it's, you, you listen. Your whole life from bottom to top is affected and everybody around you. And it's just not worth that excitement as a young guy at, that you see. And at this age, he's supposed to be doing exactly Colleges, what I'm trying to do. High schools, uh, prison uh, reform. So what you both are saying is the bill ain't worth it. The bill's not worth oh. it, not to anybody. You listen, why? listen, we had a cop in here today. We had a cop, in here, to, we had oh, a cop sorry, in here. Sorry, Mike. Yeah, I we, apologize. That's all right. We had a cop in here today talking with us in another one of our podcasts, right? Mm-hmm. Pension, life, horses, houses, travel in the world. Still has his, still has his uh, peace, you know, his weapons. He's trusted by the community. He's a, he's a political figure. He's a politician. He's a, a media personality. He's all the things. That we can't be. Rudy Giuliani, we just used him. Rudy Giuliani, at the end of his life, whenever that is, can be a proud guy of what he accomplished. I can't say that. Right? So there's the difference, and that's what I'm trying to teach these kids. You have the opportunity to be a Rudy Giuliani, or you have an opportunity to be a ball player, or you have an opportunity to be a truck driver. A good one. Uh, You have an opportunity to do something positive. Don't follow this. It's very simple. And anybody that says anything different about this life, I could tell exciting stories and we get drink, drunk and we talk about it and we laugh because we can't change it. You can't change it. Although yeah. we did have some times and good times, but the end up is no good. So you want to save that guy from just what one of the other cops that were talking to us about, about emotions and crying. Because you suffer and you cry your eyes out at times. And the emotional pain is the killer, not the physical pain, not the stabbings and getting batted or any other thing. 
It's the emotional pain that I'm going to try to save some kids, the heartache and their family. So Not someone's kids. John, but someone's going to say to us, "Why? Why are we here talking? Like, what are we? Why are we talking about the?" Well, don't the, leave that part. The life. Cut, cut it. Cut it because it's going to come oh, up, okay. and then we can discuss okay. it. All right. No impact to just pull that trigger. The impact is what happens to that person. You just took a life. Now, several new mob casts pull in millions of listeners drawn to the intrigue of the mob, including former foes. As an FBI agent, Phil Fleischer spent his career trying to shut them down. What do you think of these mob casts? I've been investigating, interviewing, or polygraphing people in the life. But never really get into their heads. What I found in these podcasts, they leak things they don't even realize they're leaking. Candid insights they'd only dreamed of before. John Elite still walks the streets of New York like he owns them. As a mafia hitman, he once did. Do you have any shame? I'm embarrassed to tell you what who I was and what I did. Let you hurt people, kill people. But his mobcast elite talks the talk with his co-host. The message? Stay away from the gangsters. There you go. I cried. Uh, I suffered. I'm used to physical pain. I've been stabbed up. I've been, you know, shot. I mean, those things can get past those. But the emotional pain that you suffer, the way we grew up, is is scars you forever. Do you think they're seeking redemption? I think they're, they're doing it for the money. Yeah, Stop it right there. there. Some redemption. R- roll. I think. Okay. This is an agent that's on TV, no different than we are. Sorry. And. He's saying, I think they do it for the money. He's correct. We do do it for the money. Everybody, it's a job like anything else. It's employment. Yeah. It's something positive. And the idea behind making this money is to send either a positive message or you can send a negative message. So, Are you the, robbing banks on weekends right now? No. <laughs> no, because I don't know how. Is, 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 do you work for Coca-Cola? I mean, no. they, they give you a job pushing a hand truck anywhere? No. Why not? <laughs> Because this is a ridiculous statement by this agent. So, 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 yeah, so the question is, did you fill out an application lately? That's my question. No. How's it go? Have you filled any out? Of course. Did you go to Home Depot? Of course. Did you go to a and S? Yes. CBS, CVZ, G- yeah. G- GYQ. Did you go all these places for jobs? How's that go for you? Yeah. Because uh, I want to tell, tell you how it went for me. Yeah. What's that question that they fucking always ask on that application? Yeah. Have you ever been convicted of a felony? You ever been convicted of a misdemeanor? Yes. You ever been convicted of a felony? Yes. You ever lose your license? Yes. Are you good with authority? No. So if you're going to answer those questions, ask truthfully, all that now. yes. Oh wow. Now, That's when I and, this, I was is, and this is back to me talking about giving these guys that have been in trouble a second chance. This is what I'm if getting. Those, at. If it's on this application, you're forcing these guys almost to say, "I have no choice but to be a criminal." To go back. So when you have it, you know, and I don't think the agent meant this in a bad way, really. I think he just didn't think it out when he's answering. You know. He, yeah, he seemed said, a little scornful, though. He seemed a little yeah, well, scornful. Yeah, well, some but guys keep, but keep in mind, they probably asked him the same fucking question 50 times, too, well, until they got possible. what they wanted. It's possible. It's possible. Here's the thing. You have a lot of good law enforcement that understand the life because they're all over the street. They understand mentalities because they're the closest thing to understanding us because they're out there. You were on a job. Who can understand? Some of us turn into you. Yeah. And so the thing is, it's okay that you're doing this for money. It's a legitimate job. And it's something that's positive. If you turn it into something negative, like Sammy's doing, yeah, I'm against it. I'm the first guy to say I'm against it. If he wants to tell that story, but then say I'm sorry for some of the things I was involved well, with. Well, the thing that pissed me off about him, we, we glossed right over it, is he said no impact on me. Yeah, well. Now, I don't think they cut him out. He's got victims, families, that he was involved with different things. Instead, he's glorifying with these articles on his wall. This is the problem, and I understand why the victims' families are mad. Because a lot of those families, their fathers, uncles, and brothers were gangsters too, doing the same thing, killing other people. Like I always say, if you get killed now before it was part of, unfortunately, what we did. So I'm not, you know, I understand that they feel bad because they lost family members, and I, I'm in agreement with them. But they got to understand their fathers, just like me, we all signed up for yeah, this well, nonsense. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. And I tell my kids They the still same lost thing. a father, but at the same time... Yeah, it's terrible it's for terrible them. It's terrible for them, but they still... And you got, so... They, you, you, if you got whacked, you took the pledge to... Yeah, so, to, so an example to would life. be when you, play, when you go box or you play football. Yeah. 
you you know of the brain injuries. You're gonna get any, hurt. Any people? You're gonna get you hurt. know you're gonna get hurt. You're you're after Sunday. You're not gonna feel good that day. And Monday morning, you're really gonna feel bad. Well, but again, but you know, but you chose to go into the yes, NFL. Yes, but knowing here, that. here's the thing, that's all true. But as a family member of one of these guys, even though they chose it, he's wrong for glorifying <laughs> that nonsense and spitting in their face. Well, so they're right. The the victims' families are right, even if their families were gangsters. Because you're trying to glorify something, but the problem they're not understanding, and and I'm gonna, I hope they're listening. This is a lonely old man that doesn't know anything but that nonsense. He never knew anything but Brooklyn. He didn't know what it was to travel on vacation to other countries. Never been anywhere, I guarantee you. Unless he tells you he was in the army somewhere for a year, he's never been anywhere. These guys don't live outside their little box. They're not educated enough. So to simplify, basically. He's glorifying what he did. You're not. Yeah. Okay? And you did what you did. You can't take it back. You know you did wrong. You know you hurt a lot of people and a lot of families. And your way of trying to repent in a way is to tell these kids, look, stay away from this shit. It's not good. I'm not making this, uh, you know, an in, in flash. What the fuck is the word I can never say? Like, like uh, cool. Like, this isn't cool. I'm, Inflatuation. Yeah. I tell, tell them this. He says he was home setting something up, but I wasn't. Sometimes I set things up, but I was the guy that was actually going out and doing these yeah, things. Yeah, you were at the end. I was doing the shootings. I was doing the killings, unfortunately. I was doing the stabbings, the baseball bat beatings. And I'm saying guys like him are fake because they're hiding away somewhere. And they're not really doing the work that they're trying to bullshit about, but then they want to glorify it and then still live it instead of sending the message that, hey, I was involved and I sent people to go do things and it wasn't me at least say that. But you know, we all get convicted for the same thing if you're involved in a murder. And somebody wrote that on one of the feeds. And that's not the, 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 uh, the point of what we're saying. The point is we already know legally that you get convicted yeah, for conspiracy, it. Yeah. Conspiracies and all this. But what they're missing the point is these guys aren't actually doing the work. He doesn't even know what it feels yeah, it's, like. It's, it's easy the, to give an order out. Hey, for, go kill someone. I right, see you later. Now this from, guy hasn't pulled the trigger in 50 years, trust me, yeah. in the 70s. He's got no real shootings. He's got no real stabbings. He's got no real baseball bat. So he should be saying that. He, exactly. That's what. That's what I'm getting. Yeah, yeah, you, 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 yeah. You, don't, you pull some fucking teeth here. You got to. Yeah. <sighs> he, he should. He should be saying, "I never really. I killed maybe one person. I regret it. I didn't. Shoot I regret it. Right. Okay, now you, that, you as a cop, you're watching this. Forget right. what you did. Right. What are you thinking as a cop? Uh, as far as what he's, you, his yeah. mindset. Yeah. So you're a cop. You're. 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 You just got out of the academy. You're you're straight. Right. Now now you turn on the TV. Here's Sammy the boy. I see this thing here. Yes. And I go to myself. The guy. Well, I'm knowing a little history, right? You have yeah. To know well, a you're history. a cop, so obviously yeah, you would. I know would've. a little history. Right. Exactly. I know I know his history. I know his past. And I'm watching this, and I'm saying to myself, one, I was really, I I, I actually was flabbergasted. That that's maybe the word you're looking for. I was flabbergasted that he had the plaques up like that because they reminded me, like I said, of like like platinum albums in my entertainment attorney's office. And then when I hear him say uh, it had no impact on me, like it reminded me of somebody else, it's, it's Kenny Urell, Mike. I didn't lose a minute's sleep. I didn't lose a minute's sleep over putting you away. I'm like. Like you just killed somebody, all right? You did it. You did it was part of what you did back then. But did you reflect? Did you reflect and have a moment of reflection? I just took some guy's life who happened to be like a family member of his. Or something. One, one guy was missing at a wedding. The daughter went up at the wedding. The Kenny was at this wedding. The guy from my the guy who ratted on you me. You keep saying Kenny. So tell Ken, everybody who Kenny is. Kenny's the guy that ratted on me in the Seven Five documentary. My ex partner who put the wire on what came to my house. He was. A, he's he, the one who brought his you family down. To, he's, he's he's distant family to, to this guy Sammy, and they were at a wedding, and the daughter went over to Sammy at the wedding and said, "Where's my dad?" He, she told me if there's ever a problem to come see Sammy, and my 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 Kenny Urell, the guy that put the wire on against me, was at the wedding with Sammy that night, and and he and sort of whole the whole I don't know if they put openly publicly talked about it, but that wedding he was at, and then my partner was there, but but to say you had no impact like that's fucking. 
I mean, did you think about, you know, the daughter? How about that? The daughter <laughs> says to him, you see, my daddy says to come see you if anything ever goes wrong. Oh, really? It had no impact on you? Would you have another fucking uh, shrimp? <laughs> you a your little uh, hot spicy shrimp on top of this? What were you going to say, Rob? No, I was just saying the, the, the way I look at it, like from seeing the story, the way they set it up was they started with Sammy, and he's this... He has this great story to tell, right? This, even if it's a fake story, right. right? Of how many people he killed. So they suck people in, and they're given this guy who's glorifying it, who's not remorseful. He's glorifying everything. Then they bring you on, the way they wrote it. Then they bring you on, and the way I heard it, when I heard them say, you know, John still walks the streets like he owns them. Yeah. For a person back home, they're like, oh, this fucking guy's still like a fucking... Yeah, guy. but yeah, but, but, the, but then they talk so about on, the... Hold on, I'll let, let him finish. So, so, you know, like, they're still making you look like Sorry. this bad guy, right? From what you did in your past. They're giving you your couple of schnitbits of saying, you know, don't do this, don't do that. But the viewers already, after watching Sammy, and you're the next guy up who was in it too, they're like, this fucking guy's full of shit. That's the, the way they wrote it. The way they that's if right. They put, that's if right they put me. you first, if the if that the I'm story, still doing the same if thing. If the story would have started with you and said, you know, John uh, is a reformed mobster. He's speaking out against uh, you know the mob and for kids. It would it would have flipped the story totally. So they give the impression that I'm not the reformed. That's the guy. way I look. That at I'm not reformed. Not, not that you're not reformed, but. The, no, the viewer, the, the viewer, the viewer. Seeing, that's what I was trying to say. The, the viewer is seeing this. They're seeing Sammy the Bull is is awesome. He's he's the big mob guy, yeah. and there's John who still thinks he's the cool motherfucker walking the street like it's nothing. That's what I was trying to say to you. That's what. So the it's person, not giving the image to these kids to to not at what all. What what is giving to the what he just said in in a in a kinder way. But I'm very close with you, so I just, you know, we tell things the way it is. Right. You know, we don't get mad. Yeah. And what they did was they made Sammy look like Sammy's this big, famous mob guy. Yeah. And there's you, who's a nobody, still walking the streets. Well, but That's they, what the viewer sees. Well, but they, Not what you see, not what I see, but what the viewer sees. But they also, the way they did it was... They started with Sammy. That's what I mean. Sammy has a name. So do you. But Sammy, yeah. this fake well, story of Sammy. Yeah. Yeah. But what they're doing is they're making it where he's a terrible person. He's he's He doesn't give a fuck. He shows this. Then they bring you on. They give you this walk down the street. And, of That's course, the they go right they, down to the Gucci shoes. Yeah, they go down yeah. to the shoes. And they say, you know, That's John, the first John still the Gucci the streets like he owns them. So now the viewer, the first, they probably didn't even hear what you just said after that because all they're like, man, this motherfucker too. Yeah. He's another one of those guys. He owns the shit. That's, he, as he, a viewer, that's he, the, here's the thing. They fucked you, John. Here, other, let me, other people. Let, let, me, let me tell you what I think, Mike. And I tell everybody this. People ask me, where did you get Felix from? And I did a show with Felix once, and I said, this kid is a, an intelligent, young college kid with a whole life ahead of him. And I wanted to show the contrast of do, do, living a good life and you could become a young, intelligent, successful man like Felix. This is the reason why we teamed up. And people ask me, I go, I'm not glorifying the mob. I'm trying to show what you can be if you do the right thing. And that's guys like Felix. And we came very close. He's like a son to me. So when I'm out and I'm talking and I put him on the show with me, I want the public to understand what do you think this guy's doing here? He's a good kid. He's a young man that's successful, that's educated. And I was hoping that would get passed through, but what all you guys keep telling me is, and I don't know because I'm getting it from your guys' perspective, well, I still think I'm that gangster and I'm walking through Brooklyn and I'm full of shit that I'm still... That's the perception. It's not yeah, what he not, thinks or I think. No, no, it's, I, it's the perception. perception. And that's what everybody... Well, well, that's... Anybody that isn't afraid of you, that isn't face-to-face -face with you, is going to say, oh, no, John, no, no, no. But the people that are your real friends that know you, yeah. they're going to tell you the truth. Did Everybody else, he, he's, one of, he's one of us. So. I know. How does he look so, at it? So initially, he, I feel that they, they tried to leave that bad, hard image still, even though your words weren't saying it. So maybe that's like, is he really? Because look at him. He still owns the streets. So... I, I, in the beginning, I, I, I could hear it from your perspective, but as I... As but think of it, a guy has no idea yeah, about yeah, anything. But that, yeah, but I know you, so that's why it was more impactful for me in a positive way. But now looking at it from some 
wide-eyed, bushy-tailed, you know, housewife or some guy who works, you know, uh, build, builds a bridge, you know, puts cement on walls. He might go, look at this gangster. Because the, the, vis, the, vis, the visible image is not, it's not the portrayal of his words. Right. Does because, that make sense? Because they start with Sammy and then they go right to him walking down the street, right down to his Gucci sneakers. Right. And say, Actually, they're Roberto just, Cavalli. I, I, really? I, I look like yeah. Gucci. Okay. <laughs> again, uh, okay. same, same thing. I wouldn't know the difference. There's no, that. I have the Gucci's in the other ones. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's why you got it confused. Yeah, well, I have the Gucci ones. I thought yeah. you had, I thought I, I had, had the, Gucci the, too. the Bumblebee on it. Again, but I'll, I'll look at it. I know what Puma looks like and that's it. <laughs> it's, a, it's a, what, three minute and 40 second interview, I believe, something like that. Yeah. So they bring in Sammy the Bull, right? Blah, 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 blah. They're showing killings they're showing can you st rewind showing, that they're showing the good rewind it a little bit to the umbrella uh, we're gonna... you know they have all this killings right there's this the umbrellas later there's this glorified gangster right uh then they're coming in and they're showing the killings right killings more killings people are seeing this visually they're hearing it he's talking blah 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 now we're at a minute 30 and still on sammy the bull okay well, now, now, now about we come in two minutes. Now we come into you at two minutes, okay? Right? And then they give you a little introduction. They show you. Right? Stop right, it right sorry. there. He, he Back it up to, a second. He wants to kill him on that. No, I don't want to. It's not that. <laughs> I want to show. Uh, <laughs> I, I, yeah, I should have fucking. I want to show why Gotti made him his underboss because he could completely control him. He yeah. could make him do things like this. Right. Oh, I'm fucking, just, yeah. it's, you know, this is the point. I mean, everything's important. And these things nobody else is seeing because they don't know any better. And you know, and in the life is about controlling things, it, and you know when you're in that world. So Sammy wants to give the image that he's controlling something, even till today. And this is the misconception he's trying to sell to these kids. But the media is allowing it to happen. Yep. Because all the well, they, they got their own agenda for ratings. Well, it's like the correct, newspapers. Like, correct. And and what is Sammy without a good story? Nothing, right? If he doesn't have this story, they're always know. glorifying him for some reason. So yeah. then they go to this guy who talks about basically whatever. Talk that he loves the podcast. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then and, we and then boom, go back, go back, and and listen now to hit play they, from there. Hit say. play. Yeah. Listen to what they say. Nights they'd only dreamed of before. John Elite still walks the streets and of the New music. York like yeah, the he music. Knows yeah. As a mafia hit. Hey, one more time. Watch, watch. Listen to the music. John Elite still walks the streets of New York like he owns them. As a mafia hitman, <laughs> he once did. So he still walks as like a mafia, as a mafia hit hitman. Hit. He used, to, you know, it he did. Like, it's a play on words. It's a play on yeah, words. It's, it's yeah. psychological. Yeah, it's yeah. Psychological. yeah. Go ahead. And then now we hear this, and, yeah. and I'm like, Let's Man, see this guy's a fucking asshole. But like right. Rob said to the average viewer that doesn't know anything, as a mafia hitman. Yeah. One, once John, they once uh, they say John Elite yeah. is a mafia hitman, right. blah blah blah, and they point fuck down at the guy. shoes, fuck all dressed nice yeah, yeah, yeah. with the good, with the Cartier sunglasses yeah. on. Oh fuck him! Fuck and then whatever guy. he said about it's kids bullshit. and the good shit, nobody even listened Correct. to it. Go ahead, They're it. rewinding back to see Sammy again. Correct. Go ahead, play it. Miss. He once did. Do you have any shame? I'm embarrassed to tell you what who I was and what I did. Let you hurt people, kill people. Now the viewer at home's like, he's fucking full of shit. But his mobcast elite talks the talk with his co-hosts. The message, right. stay away from the gangster's life. I cried. Uh, I suffered. You know, I'm used to physical pain. I've been stabbed up. I've been, you know, shot. I mean, those things can get past those. But the emotional pain that you suffer, the way we grew up, is, is scars you forever. Do you think they're seeking redemption? I think they're, they're doing it for the money. See, and then they go to there that. There is some redemption. I yeah, they fucked some. them. So, so John, one more time, just so you, this is what I see, just so you know. They start with Sammy. They get, build up that perception. They bring you on. They make you look. He's still this gangster. He's still he's still this guy. Like there's still, still killers. The they, like there's still killers out yeah. there. Then, they give him then, ten then, seconds then, of his message, then, and yeah. then they're back to then Sammy. Psychologically, right. I see you, and you said some great stuff there. That was yeah. You did say great stuff. There's no question. But people are still looking, and they're like they're still stuck on the guy. image. And then then they come to this guy, and they says, show Sammy all busted up. And then they show this guy who says, you know, do you think it's about redemption? He's like. Uh, no, they're doing it for the money. So and then boom, like, they go right. But you got you got to be Sammy. honest. See, I think I don't know the guy because you know they could have cut what he's saying. He's right. We are doing it for the money, but the money with the positive message. Everybody goes yeah, to work, so we're going to work. But here's the thing, the way Rob. It, the way they do it, I've, of course, it's 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 it's, it's entertainment. Players. They're trying to get their fucking numbers. Uh, and uh, yeah, we get more views here than they get on okay. the fucking. And it's <laughs> and it's pl it's playing with things, but the thing is like anything else. Do you have a track record? I have 10 years now, a decade, of 
working with kids, working with homeless, working with veterans, PTSD, like myself. So when a guy like him, he doesn't know me. But if he sat down and said, wait a second, this guy goes out on the weekends and feeds the homeless. He does go to cancer for kids. John, you need another 15 minutes on yeah. the show. Yeah. Here. They so, didn't give it to you. But the point is they don't give a fuck. I know that. No. They're not here to show They don't give a, a damn. Positive. But this is why... This is why I blame a lot of the media. Fake for, news. Should. No, not just on my show. I'm talking about when they do this, yeah. when they they don't realize the power of mm -hmm. what they're doing. They're doing it for ratings because they need ratings to exist. So, so they're doing it for the money. Right? Wait. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, wait. There you go. And <laughs> now they're doing it for the money. But it's the power of the media that they don't understand the influence on these children. So when you got Joy Reid... Or one of them causing this rift between racial divide. They have such power over these kids and they don't realize it. It's frustrating to me because I am the guy that was doing the bad things. But I'm also the bad guy saying, hey, give these guys a chance at something in life. You won't give me a chance at life. What are you going to do to these kids? And I'm a little more out there than these kids and I have more opportunity to them. So if you don't want to give me opportunity. I thought you couldn't get a job at Home Depot. Yeah, I couldn't. <laughs> I couldn't get a job at any of these places, and I did try when I first came home. So when you're not giving me an opportunity, how are you going to give it to these other kids? And so, you know, and this is what I'm fighting for. So you have those guys in those neighborhoods that have a chance, instead of being a gangster, they could be a fat man scoop, and they can be successful, or you can be a musician, or you can be a ball player, but you need the opportunities for people not to judge you like they keep doing. Every show you go on like this, it's going to be the same thing. Because what you have to say doesn't get ratings. What Sammy has to say gets ratings. Because that's just the bottom line. Because it's negative. Well, I know. Uh, I agree with you yeah. 100%. And John could buy a 1,000 turkeys and feed uh, every homeless person in Chicago. And the headline will be, what will the headline Sam be? Sam the Bull trips no, over his no, speaker. No, <laughs> the, the headline will be uh, former mobster, former something. Former instead, killer. Instead of Hit former, man. former killer buys a thousand turkeys. Instead of this, John Elite buys a thousand turkeys to help people out. They have to put that in there because yeah. people aren't going to yeah. read it. I know. I get, sad. Why, I, get, I get why it's they do sad. it, but it it's is very sad. sad. Just, just him as my friend. It's very sad. Him as my friend, it, it pisses me I off. Gives and a I, want fuck. To I give a fuck because they fucked him. No, that's different. But it is what gets they, you in the door gets you. If you're a pretty blonde, what gets you in the door? Yeah. But, or but, a brunette with blue, with blue eyes. But, right? Mike, but Mike, I've done 15 of these but, with him. 15, if yeah. not more. Yeah. Probably 20 if you add the other ones, right? Yeah. right? Okay. And he doesn't give a fuck. He went on there, in my belief, right. I could be wrong, to put a message. Absolutely, on, okay? 100%. But the problem is, they're not. They're turning him into still a gangster, the cocky motherfucker walking down. You're right. not a motherfucker, but right. cocky guy walking right. down the street with his fuck. What kind of shoes were those? Yeah, yeah. Capizios. No, Capizios. No, they were. I, 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 I haven't had money for a couple years. Roberto, Roberto come on. I, 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 I don't know. Yeah. I, I well, only know the Capizios. They're, they're, they're higher than Gucci. I, I forgot so, I mean, the name. There you go. So all, all I see... Right, and I know you is I'm looking at the fucking sunglasses and the shoes. So if you don't think that the ninety, the ninety people that watch this, uh, yeah, because yeah, we get better <laughs> ratings. How about the Versace we get jacket. better ratings. The Versace jacket I, underneath. I was still too busy looking at the fucking. I because I thought I was. It doesn't matter why I was looking at the. Shoes. I understand your point. I'm not. Right. I'm not opposed to what you're saying. What I'm saying is this, and you, we can't. And John, it's very. You you recognize what I'm going to say. I have to lead with X Rogue Cop or Seven Five Documentary Fucking Thief Cop, whatever it is, to get me in the door. And then and then like Sammy, you like me now, right? I mean, I mean, he's, he's not even like how many he's these, not how many even like shows have you done? Huh? How many types of shows like this uh, have you done? I've done a hundred shows now. I've been you know I'm all over TV. I mean, and, obviously. And and why? What did you just say right before that? To get his foot in the door, I think his foot's in the door. His foot's already I in mean, the door, listen, and this is what I they think. We, we we went through. We went through I've this done every time. major magazine. Yeah, you're gonna go around and around with me. I'm telling you, what gets you in the door is what you did. Yeah. All right now, you want we want to be known for doing better. Correct. Yeah. I I think the problem is this. It just year after year after year, it'll finally get the image of it changed. You know that the guys change. It's ten years now, so eventually. When it keeps going, like Anthony Ruggiano, who you had on the show, is my friend. Grew up as a gangster. His father was a boss. 
and he's been helping uh, people with addictions for 30 years. You know, there's guys that commented so, that know him from like 20 years ago, 10 yeah. years ago. He go like, Anthony, do you remember me? Do you remember me? Like, they really, he yeah. really helped these kids out. He wasn't full of shit. No, no, it's 30 years he's been working with uh, with people with yeah. addictions. And I would text so, him and I say, know, hey, you know this guy? He goes, yeah, but he, the fucking he, guy he, remember. Here's the thing what Mike was saying, and I am in agreement. 30 years of helping people with addiction, he's still the gangster, and he's still the yeah. gangster son. And, you know, he's doing talks, and some of these talks he's doing, and he's involved in some of these shows. Actually, the show we did together, it'll be out in uh, January 27th. 2020. For 2020. Right. And it's a positive message about families, and that's what it's supposed to be. Now, we'll see how it, <laughs> it, how it no, we're going to no, see how it comes out. Who's because, mixed in with you? But guys. no one's calling him if he, if he doesn't have a history. You understand? Yeah, I, that's, I, I get you. It's yeah, hard yeah. to get away from that. Uh, that's all, Tommy. I and, and, and you think I want to be remembered for being like one of the dirtiest cops and, in New York City? And, no. and the guy that's hey. interviewing me, he's a gentleman, nice guy. The woman, Sylvie, that ran it. She's a nice woman. Very, very polite. But they're not calling all the shots either. No. They, have, they work for a network. It's a billion dollar company that has, they want the image that they want across that television right. set. So it's a give and take. So, you know, you might have to give some of that to get that message across. And maybe you're going to reach, instead of reaching 2 million people that are going to believe your message, maybe 100,000 will. That you're, you're, you're hoping that it'll help. If you change, change one life, life right? If you've it, it cha was, you've moved mountains. Yes, you, you changed one life. All right, Maybe that's that, that's fair, right? Agreed. Right. Hey, play. And, and I understand it. Yeah. Hey, play, Rob. Thank you. I think they're seeking redemption. I think they're, they're doing it for the money. I think there is some redemption. I think there's some conscious clearing. Tommy Bellotti was blown away. Paul was on the sidewalk. But are mobcasters like Sammy the Bull worried their past might catch up with them? I don't hide. Stop it. Me Stop it. Stop Does it look like I'm hiding? Stop it. Okay. Here's the major part of bullshit, right? Now, we all know he's full of shit. Full of shit. Completely full of shit. Look, the baseballs. No, well, the baseball, he's really full of shit. But he's really, <laughs> here's, here's the major part that kids need to know. This fucking guy never left his block in Brooklyn. Like I said earlier, I will eat my phone if he's traveled around to several countries. Mm -hmm. Never, unless it was with the army at the, whatever, a year or two when he was 20 years old, 18 years old. This guy knows nothing but Brooklyn. Just in case you know, somewhere else don't eat that. Until no, we, I will we eat that phone on, 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 <laughs> on the show. I will eat it because this guy's never been anywhere. But wait till we're situated, okay. then eat the fucking So thing. now I'll tell you, here's the point, Rob. I have My, an edible phone. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Here's the point. We know people in China. This guy loves Brooklyn and it's all he knows. So if you want to talk that talk, then walk it and live in Brooklyn. Don't live in Arizona and say you're not hiding because obviously you're full of shit there. You're hiding there because you know you're too scared to be in Brooklyn. And now he's an older guy. We're older. We're not kids anymore. So you want to talk that, you want to be that, then be here in Brooklyn. And show everybody the area in Brooklyn and let those kids say, well, at least he's telling the truth. Brooklyn. So when they find him dead on the street in Brooklyn, I thought he, can in, live, he can live the I truth. We're in Lake Worth, Florida. What the fuck yeah. are you in Brooklyn? <laughs> no, him, where he was. Oh, uh oh. So now you're in, well, we're in Florida now, but we live in New York still. <laughs> So the you're, point, you're the in Palm Beach, the Palm, Palm Beach, Beach. <laughs> um, Palm Beach, Florida. How's that? He's completely <laughs> lying blatantly yep. to, the, to, to the interviewer because. If you don't know anything but Brooklyn your whole life, that's all you love. You don't know anything but this nonsense. That's because this is why you, you brag about it. You don't want to give a message to a young kid to change. You don't care about the victim's families. You didn't care about your own family. You killed your brother-in-law. So you, what you're saying is the message should have been at that moment is I'm embarrassed of what I did. And uh, I, I'm afraid of my own shadow, or whatever. Something. We got a guy, Frankie, that you talked to. It was another wise guy. He grew up, his family's all from Italy, made guy. This guy went to jail, and he's holding hands with a group of Spanish guys teaching him the, the induction. This is how insecure he is, because this is all he has. He doesn't have anything besides this. He's not capable of changing anything. And at this age, if he doesn't have this, he probably want to hang himself. But what he has is is a lie. Everything about it's a lie. He wasn't a killer, really. It was a lie. He's hiding out in Arizona. That's that's the truth. He's signing baseballs. It's a lie. He can't even throw one. So everything he does is a lie. And 
no one say anything, but... And they're not going to. Okay, and I've said this last time. You can say it 100,000 times. This whole image is bullshit. And if he believed in Cosa Nostra and he knew so much about Cosa Nostra, you would have went to Italy to understand it. You'd learn the language. You can't speak a word of Italian. Everything about him is full of shit. Cooperating, lying, saying I was going to kill. Tell us how you really feel. I was going to kill. Tell no. us how you really yeah. <laughs> I was going to kill John Gotti. You were never going to kill John Gotti. Who are you bullshit? And you were too scared of him. You know, not you. It breaks him. down his. It breaks down his, his. I call it a character. It breaks down his ego. He's not. He's not Sammy the Bull anymore. He's just some, some guy, guy that's carrying the umbrella for John Gotti. Correct, yeah. He's a guy that John Gotti could control when he put him there. But if he does, he's a guy that testified against the mob. Yeah. You're not a guy that believes in Cosa Nostra to the end. You're not a guy that loves Arizona and so you're not hiding. Come back here. All right, let's run this fucking thing. Let's see, get rid of this thing. <laughs> you're sick of this guy. This guy I, I'm sick of the, uh, the mob stuff. Let's talk about critical you know, race theory one day. Guy never, <laughs> I don't hide from what I did. I don't hide from anything. For Sunday today, Kevin Tibble. What's he signing? Pictures of Al Capone? Is that what I just saw? Yeah. I don't know what he's signing. Hold on, what's that? I got to see it. He can't even write. He only went to the second grade. Here, just play it. Hit play. Hit play. Yeah, it is Al Capone. No, Pause. it's not. No, it's not. It's him. Hold on. That's not him. It's him. It's him. Kevin Tibble. Why can't I pause it at the red spot? It's him. Now pause and then move the mouse. Move that's the mouse. Him. Move the mouse. Yeah. That will go away. There we go. All right. That's him? That's him. No, I don't think that's, that's not him. fucking That's, that's Al Capone. Him. That's Al Capone. That's not fucking That's Al Capone. That's not Sam. He looks just like Sam the Bull. No. <laughs> You're fucking blind. <laughs> You need laser There's surgery. There's underboss. So why would he sign a picture? Why would he sign a picture of somebody else? You can't do that. Well, he is. That's Al Capone. That's not fucking Sammy Gravano. Turn that upside down. <laughs> Mike. Look at the electric panel. <clears throat> Mike. <laughs> Mike. Look not, at the electric panel. That's Al Capone. Al's a good guy. So, at the end of the year, Roy DeMeo was a killer. He went out he every day and nuts. killed. You know, these are My guys- My father went to high school with Roy. Who really? do you think was worse, Roy or Gaspipe? Roy had a bit. Roy. Oh. Listen, we're going to do a segment on... Right. Wait, you know, wait, I'll say that for another yeah, one. Okay, yeah, yeah. On, yeah. On, on killers and different things. So I know a lot about Roy. But when a guy gets in a ring, my friend Bobby Chez is a champ. He's in the Boxing Hall of Fame. Great fight. He gets in a ring every day and he fights. Thank you fight. for introducing him to me. He was, in, he, he was good. He was very good. Very no, smart guy. Great. Oh, very intelligent. He was going to be a doctor. Yeah. Very, very Yeah, he's mental. Guy. He's a great announcer when he was announcer with Showtime too. Yeah. So when you guy, a guy that does what he does, he's not full of shit. He was in a ring every day. This guy wasn't a shooter every day. He can say that 40 years or 50 years ago he shot a gun. I'd, I'd like to check that. You guys got to check. We got to get the paperwork and find out when the last time he shot anybody. And I'm telling you, it's 40 years ago. About, right? 85, yeah, about 40 years ago. And before that, maybe one other one. And that was about 50 years ago. I the think one thing, the everybody 70s. knows you got a memory like a fucking elf. Yeah. I, I mean, even in the comments and shit. You should see what else. <laughs> like an elephant. Yeah. yeah. So I heard. <laughs> so, so I heard. But tonight. Stop, stop telling our secrets at all. But tonight, I'm not, I'll, I'll be getting a different room. That's <laughs> it. That's <laughs> it. That's it. Guys, guys. Snuffle up because. I got nothing call, against anybody, but I don't want to know. I don't want to know. Just let me, let me have my, my, uh, the way I it's think the of Howard you guys. Stern show? This is the Howard Stern show breaking now, out right now. Now, just <laughs> let me keep thinking of you guys the way I do, and whatever you guys nice. do in your private time is nice. fine. Yeah, snuffle here. <laughs> All right. Anything I, else? I got one question. Go ahead, you, go, Rob. So, do you think Sammy's continuing to keep this persona just because you know now his daughter was on that show to keep her, uh, keep that family afloat? Maybe. No, no. Let me like, tell you I mean, something. Like, I was friends. Good with his question. Daughter. That's a good. Question. I was friends with his daughter. She's pretty smart. She carried her own weight, and she's the one that actually carried her father. So he came off her heels. It wasn't the other way around. Right. And if it wasn't for her, I don't think he would have been able to step into all this. So I think she put him to the water. He just doesn't know how to drink it. Because instead of doing the right thing with the, with his life in the past, he could have made something positive out of this. At this point, you can't turn directions and say, well, all of a sudden I care about kids. Yeah. <laughs> because he doesn't. He don't care about anybody. So unfortunately, this is his character. And like I said, he does it because this is all he has. Without this, he's not. He can never let. Does his he daughter, get a pension? Or he could never let his daughter be the top. <laughs> Does the, the mob top, get a pension? Top, top Did they, these guys get pensions and stuff? No, no. we don't get pensions. <laughs> I, I have one last question. Did he? 
I, I never asked you this before. When when they were doing the ecstasy thing, were his daughters doing it first, or did do you know if he brought them into it with him? I did an interview with Steve Atwood in the UK, and guys that were friends of his and mine had some mutual people that we were in jail together and traveled, and one of them, Patrick Jenkins, by the way, welcome home, Patrick. He just got out of jail. So these are guys that uh, know the real history behind that ecstasy. And they've made some conversations and talks, and we're going to do another one about that. Okay. So let's leave that today. Right. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah. Well and said. So let, anything, Mike? How do we everybody find no, you? The still? Mike Dowd. Find me on Twitter. Uh, Michael Dowd on Facebook. Instagram. Uh, Instagram, the Mike Dowd. And uh, yeah. And, and Email? I, you'll find me around here quite often. <laughs> and, you're, and Amazon, the uh, movie. You can get Amazon uh, Prime. Or yeah. There. Yeah. I don't know about the movie. I don't follow it anymore because <laughs> they don't pay me anything. <laughs> All right. Fuck them. Don't fuck watch the movie. Wait, wait, wait till he gets his fucking. Wait till I get my back. movie and my TV series. Don't watch the fucking movie. For me, it's True John Elite on Instagram and go to our website for baseball bats, real baseballs for guys that played ball. <laughs> and we're going to have, uh, shortly we're going to have uh, a junior uh, college ball play pitcher, uh, Ben on the show, a great athlete, and we're going to talk about sports a little further and, and the uh, pursuit of a professional career and what it takes. And uh, if you want anything else, photos, uh, clothing, or a clothing line or anything, you'll have pictures of us guys and other people go on to the websites. All righty. And subscribe to MSCS Media. Subscribe to John Elite. I'm coming out with some new underwear soon, so yeah. You're coming out with some new <laughs> the underwear? The Superman ones? Yeah. No, no, the other ones. <laughs> well, I'm going to get the European ones. He had, the, he had the thong. With, with fucking hairy legs and shit. Uh, I don't have any hair on my legs. He tried to climb in my room I have no hair on my legs. Naturally, you have no hair on your legs. Nothing. Bullshit. Let me see your fucking legs. Uh, let's see. See if he can, uh, what camera we going at? I swear he shaves him for the heels. He wears the heels. Lift it up no again. Lift it up leg. again. Lift it up again on the yeah. fucking no table. No hair on my leg. Rob, get those b big uh, stilettos he wears. Stilettos he wears. Got to lift it up higher. John, John, move back. Move back a little bit. No, no, I'm on camera four. I got. Oh. Uh, lift up your leg. Look at. If I showed you my ass, there's none on there either. So forget it. Wow. He actually doesn't have any hair on his leg. <laughs> he, he wears doesn't. stilettos. There. Nice ones. <laughs> ah, nice. He, he had a mini skirt on the other day. He looked. How do you perfect. know that he had a mini skirt on he, his stilettos? He was sleeping with me. He bought a. <laughs> oh. He bought a. He was in my. He was in the Don't, apartment. All right. Uh, after that, you phone. can approve the comments <laughs> on yours on that one. Yeah. Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you. Bought me a fucking you can hit check, not right. me. That's right. <laughs> no him. Yeah. <laughs> he'll fucking check them all and you'll be buried uh, yeah. I, I do, next thing you know I, it'll be, I, I do it'll be mean, mob killers right. is uh, getting engaged to Michael Dowd <laughs> we checked in at the hotel they were like who is that I go it's my husband I said look <laughs> at his neck my name's tattooed on it <laughs> so you got a killer and a fucking crooked cop beyond belief Okay. Yeah. Hey, good. Uh, good. I think I hey, knew that, him. I hey. knew him. Good relationship. Hey, that would make a great TV show. The guy at the hotel knew him. <laughs> yeah. It would be a good TV show. TV show. There we go. If you got to uh, fake it to make it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Another good one. Thank you both. Uh, I, See love, you guys. I love you. All right. It's a beautiful morning in New York.